All right, welcome to Dash 28 Live. We have Keith Randall versus uh, Matt Vermeeren. Uh, I just realized I probably should have asked how you say that. <laughs> yeah, Vermeeren. Uh, and we do have uh, some little ones in the background, too. Um, all right, and then uh, joining me, we have Tom Robinson, uh, John Poyle, and Mike Rossi. Um, let's, uh, let's introduce our players first. Uh, Keith, uh, go ahead and say something about yourself. Yeah, my, my name is Keith. Um, if you've been watching these things, you saw me epically fail in the last round against Paige. Um, I live in Nashville. I'm uh, involved in the southeastern scene. Um, I played Elves almost exclusively in second edition and had an epic rant about how bad they were in third on Countercharge. And uh, now I'm saying, you know, fuck it. Let's see how it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Matt, a little bit about yourself and uh, I guess why you decided to choose Orcs this round. Hey, everyone. My name's Matt. I um, live in Canada, Ontario, just uh, east of Toronto. Um, I play Orcs as my main army. So since the COVID outbreak, I've just been working on ironing out what I would like to use for 2,000 or 2,300. I haven't found my 2,300 point list yet, but I feel pretty good about this one, so I'm going to see how it does. All right. Uh, Tom, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Tom Robinson from uh, Yorkshire, the UK. You've seen me on the stream a couple of times now, both playing and commentating. Uh, you'll see me again on Sunday, I think, if you want to stick around. Uh, I am the current UK master. We got the Tom vs. Tom matchup. Big sword up there. <laughs> Showing off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which I took over the dead bodies of John Quayle and all his friends at Masters. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm now. Man, yeah, y'all's uh, y'all's uh, trophy is much better than master. ours. Mine's this a master three, little yeah. uh, little plaque. Uh, John. Uh, so one of the dead bodies that Tom stepped over. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, I don't need an introduction anymore. Yeah, just the the chaff that left around. Uh, so I'm John uh, from the UK uh, in the Shires in the UK. Not the Yorkshires, uh, you know, where all the hobbits That's came right. from. Um, yeah, I've been in the UK scene for quite some time now. Was one of the dead bodies at Masters. I was the second dead, you know, second top dead body, I suppose, if you put it that way. So you, you, do you, too died, bad. you died the second least. Uh, there you go. I died the second least. There you, you go. Nobody something. remembers that. You, know? you did kill something, which is more than both Dan <laughs> and Paul Fox managed. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> I've, I've, I've got that. So all I've got to do now is just continue that theme and just die a little less every time. We'll be fine. <laughs> all right. Then we also have uh, Mike Rossi. Everybody, um, I am not a master. I'm not very good at the game. Uh, I'm no one of consequence. How about that? Was that a good intro? Um, I'm the fourth Mike on the Unplugged Radio podcast, and uh, I'm the Northeast Masters rep. Uh, so I represent other people who are very good. Um, and that's it. Nice. Yeah, and everyone knows the Masters rep become Masters rep so that they get to go to the Masters even when they're pretty bad. Like Mark, Mark Cox. <laughs> no one knows what I do with those spreadsheets, Zoro. No one knows. <laughs> All right, um, I am a, uh, a Kings of War has been uh, the first US master back when nobody knew how to play the game. <laughs> Uh, and since then, I've been writing my laurels, and people keep inviting me to do stuff. So we're gonna see how long that lasts. All right, uh, let's go ahead and um, and go over some lists. Uh, let's go over. Uh, let's go over Matt's list because that's the one I randomly opened up. All right, Matt, if you'll take us through your list. Sure. So starting off, I got two Morax troops with two more Morax regiments. They're a staple in any of my org armies, especially the troops. But I needed some unlocks, so I needed a couple regiments. Um, 
long axe hordes, something I was kind of experimenting with with this list. I hadn't really used it before, but I figured that it would go okay with the synergy the way that this list is supposed to work. Um, Young Axe, again, just needed a cheap unlock to be able to get all my little hitty heroes. Um, war Drum, so you need to have the War Drum on the bus and the infantry, or else the Orc Nerve just usually doesn't hold out. I got my main crudger with the Blade of Slashing and the Orcish Sculpo, as well as the Bloody Banner, because those more acts with the Wild Charge and the Bloody Banner just gives them that extra little step ahead. Not really going to help me too much in this game because he's pretty fast, but sometimes it comes in handy. And back in second edition, near the end there, when they released the last cock, um, I was playing double and triple slashers. So I wanted to see what I could do making a double slasher list in third edition. And that's kind of where this whole list started. And I got three crushers that are mounted just to be a pain in the ass. All right, very nice. Uh, definitely a pretty unique uh, or list. I usually, you usually don't see that many regiments and only one more drum. Um, all right, now let's go over to uh, Keith's list as soon as I click enough buttons. All right, Keith, go ahead and uh, tell us about how you went back to elves. So I have, I, I have been playing Green Lady, and I've just missed Elite so much. So I figured I'd go back. And uh, the main line of most Elven, or I, I don't even, I can't even say this with confidence anymore. I don't know what Elven players use anymore. But my theory <laughs> on the main line is a bunch of Palace Guard. And so I figured I'd bring a lot of them uh, with some random smattering of items some fury, sharpness, and then mead. And then I always liked elven shooting in second, and silver breeze is kind of the best place you can get it in third. So brought a bunch of silver breeze. I figured there'd be some troops. I was hoping there'd be more troops that I could take take apart with the silver breeze. Um, but, you know, they're fast and annoying. I have two mages, one with Bane Chant and Lightning Bolt 5 mounted. That inspires one with uh, the boomstick mounted. And I have three battle cat regiments. They're fairly effective, cheap chaff. Um, and then I have a BSB with the loot because elves need to hit things and kill them. So more bane chain is better. All right, very cool. And let's go over deployment. All right, um, Keith, let's uh, keep it rolling. Let's go from right to left. Sure. Uh, so I have two Silver Breeze regiments on the right, uh, Battle Cat behind them, then another Battle Cat, and the Major Boomstick, two, so, two more Silver Breeze regiments, a Mage with Bane Chant, Lightning Bolt, and Inspiring, Palace Guard with Sharpness in the middle, Palace Guard with Fury next to that, and Palace Guard with Mead on the back end. Um, Battle Cats in the rear, and then the BSB sort of on the left. All right, Matt, and uh, let's go over your deployment uh, right to left as well. Sure, so I got a mounted crusher over there, followed by a regiment of long axe with another mounted crusher, another regiment of long axe, and two wing slashers behind, one with haste, one with the meat of madness. Um, Continuing on, I got two Morax troops in the front with two Morax regiments in behind them. We've got a Crudger with a Crusher behind it mounted and the War Drum in the back. A Young Axe regiment beside them and the Long Axe horde with the Potion of the Caterpillar. All right, very cool. And then it's my understanding you all have not rolled the first turn yet. Not yet. Um, I, I guess uh, really quick, uh, does anybody have any questions for their deployments uh, before we let them go? No, we're good. 
All right, uh, so we're going to go ahead and kick you out, and uh, y'all can go ahead and get the game started, and then we'll talk cool. about you behind your back. Cool. <laughs> See you guys later. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Good luck. Cool. All right. Um, so what what are our thoughts on the, um, the deployment and the list? Uh, Tom, I, I remember uh, you were saying this uh, definitely seems like a fuck it. It's an uh, elves list. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely what he's done is he's looked to the elf list and gone, ah, fuck it, I give up. Um, <laughs> what happens? This is what you do when you give up and you go, well, you find three units which are good, then you take them. That's why you make the entire list. <laughs> don't need to be good units in elves. Uh, or three interests, well, semi interesting. Uh, Bad cats are even interesting, they're just alright. Yeah, this is what happens. Yeah. He's got all the he's got the good yeah. things from the elves. It's the only good trap unit. It's the only good shooting unit. Uh the elves mm -hmm. good, actually good. And then the palace guard are the only really interesting and good infantry. But yeah, well I mean all elf injuries elf is pretty much the same thing, minus one or two stats are a rule and that's all the problem. Yeah, they're all uh, pretty similar to each other. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the, I, I do think the battle cats are uh, are very yeah. necessary if you're taking three hordes. Yeah. yeah the argument, oh, Elves have got loads of white infantry now. They're a lot more interested in the foot slogging now. And it's like, well, no, it's just the same thing, really. Same with Northern Lions. Like, Northern Lions with the. It's all just some variant or something that hit, runs around on foot and hits you. Right? Mm -hmm. not, you know, and to be fair, Northern Lions have got a lot more variety to it than Elves do. So that's at least somewhat interesting. Uh, but yeah, this is. This is about what you do with elves, isn't it? I don't see much else you can do which would be interesting. You got the fast cav option, and they can fight as well now, which is kind of interesting. I'm, just, I'm not sure about the deployment with all three palace guard hordes on the left flank. Yeah, that's uh, really interesting, but at the same time, Matt has not really challenged them. No. Um, Playing scenario. He's going to barrel through yeah. the phase. Oh, to be fair, right, it looks like uh, oh, it looks like Matt has won the roll for first. Uh, to see if he decides to take it or not. Uh, what do we think about uh, Matt's list? His orc list is uh, pretty unique. I feel like I like it. So Matt has uh, taken first turn. Yeah, I can't say I blame him with invade. It's what you do, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's got like, he's got a boatload of attacks and. It's, and not a ton of nerve on that side of the table. I mean, the war drum helps, but it's a lot of dash 15, a lot of dash 11s, right? I think it's going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, it actually makes it so the shooting is going to it's going to pile up. Now, him taking I first think we, turn. we uh, already have uh, the first uh, misplay. Uh, he just moved a long axe regiment out of the uh, out of the terrain <laughs> and pulled 10 inches. Yeah. 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 Minor misdeployment having that crusher site in the terrain for no reason. Wow. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. You, yeah, yeah. you, you want to barrel forward with them and start pinning, pinning down the silver breeze. Yeah, I do like this crusher over here on the right, though, because he can only yeah. be shot at. He can't really be charged. Yeah. yeah. Um, that uh, that little gap is too small for pretty much anything to fit, fit in. But I think you're probably welcome to charge because you'll have your uh, slashes there waiting to back them up. Yeah. Yep. I don't see any. I don't see any negative in just pushing them forward and then wiping out all that unit strength to three or four. Realistically, with your players doing the work. Yeah, but you, you, you're not going to rush forward with those silver breeze, are you? You're gonna, you're gonna hold back and try to do as much damage as you can yeah. and try and get the palace guards to come around the, mm -hmm. around the flank. Yep. So when you make use of your flyers with the uh, twenty inch range over the eighteen inch range of the bows to make sure you can't do that. Yeah. Honestly, you could probably even just go in and shove those flyers in the face. Uh, the Silver yeah. Breeze aren't going to do much to a, 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 a slasher. Um, now, there is a, a nice, meaty center of defense four for Silver Breeze to attack. be interested to see if these guys on the right end up bailing to the left to try to um, go to pick off all those units. They don't see the right side Silver Breeze. They have nowhere to go. Yeah, they're boxed in and they're stuck. Yeah, they were never going to be. It's going to be hard. Uh, they, there's an inch gap here, so they can turn ninety and and go far left. But you're 
pretty much giving up that side anyway. I, I want to do that with both units, um, especially. So I would bank. want this far right unit to to still be able to threaten flanks if needed. But if you wanted yeah. to try to pick up multiple uh, more axe troops, that's the way to go. So we'll say uh, Matt's deployment has taken full advantage of the fact that he only has one drum. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units within a six inch bubble. Yeah, I always find it tricky though with the war drum on foot, trying to keep up with all the different units, especially if you got it started to get separated, then the guys on the edges are going to lose that benefit and more axe troops and even mm -hmm. the long axe don't have a particularly high nerve, so they could get picked off with a lucky shot if you're if you're not clever. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting work list with how many regiments it has, and and no god speakers to take advantage of getting extra dice. Um, said he's gone for a board control with the three pressures. Yeah, I think that's that's what he's relying on because he's the only guy. Hey, it's funny, when I first looked at the matchup, I said, obviously, for Invade, the Orc player is going to have a boatload more um, unit strength. But that's not really the case. It's 24 versus 23 between the two forces, you know? And so there isn't a clear advantage from mm -hmm. a um, from a place, you know, from, from a uh, scenario. So by going with board control with the with the two dragons, I mean, that's, that's really strong. And I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if there's an, an answer to it on the table. Yeah. I'll say there's definitely not an answer when uh, Orc suddenly had Pathfinder as well. Uh, <laughs> that's his second misplay where he's moved at a double into uh, into terrain. Well, don't they have Pathfinder? Yeah, yeah the long axe do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the he he blew it on the one oh, side. Oh, those ones do. Okay. This time. <laughs> okay, yeah. Never mind the. <laughs> uh, you know, it's on your opponent. If he doesn't notice it, <laughs> you can yeah. make a mistake. But if he doesn't realize, and we are uh, we are commenting as uh, as neutral parties. So, right. I, I really, really, really want the orcs to just barrel forward. Yeah, really it's what they need to do. Like, Turn yeah. one, get mm -hmm. right on. He's not. I don't know. I don't know. He's, he's he's made his list for board control, and then he's not doing board control. Right. Yeah, I would be a lot more aggressive with those uh, with the slashers. I would put at least one of them forward, uh, probably in front of these long axe, and essentially just dare to silver breeze to charge. Uh, you could probably make it so they're hindered, in which case you're giving up two unit strength to potentially, but most likely, not take out one. There's also the crushers. Reason as well. You've got three crushers in there who, you know, will take quite a fair bit of shooting to take down. Throw those forward as far as they can, start threatening those silver breeze. But he just kind of moved up with the rest of them. Just got to see how the, uh, how the elves really make use of that now. They've been given a chance here. They didn't need, <laughs> they didn't need to go in. Yeah, I think with the Morax. In the, in the center there with defense four. Uh, you've got perfect targets for all the lightning bolts and all the shooting. Uh, and that's a lot mm -hmm. of unit strength in the middle there. That's eight unit strength tied into those four units. Yeah, That can make a big difference come the end of the game. Now that's it. So when you're playing you have to think about realistically what you can get across and what you have to sacrifice to keep the opponent from getting his unit strength across. Right. Now on Matt's side, um, or on Matt's side, it looks like he can reasonably expect the long axis on the right to get across. I, I don't see Silver Breeze picking them up. No. Um, and unless he, he does a, an aggressive play with the slashers, he can reasonably expect them to get across. Um, and so, I mean, that's that's what eight unit strength right there. But on uh, Kevin's side, we have, I, I would say that he can reasonably expect at least two of those palace guard horse to get across with how little is in front of them. Mm -hmm. well, I'd, I'd like to see the left side palace guard horse barrel up 12 inch. Right, you're not doing it. You say the yeah, same thing. You're yeah, yeah. on yeah. um, They could have got out, out of arc. <laughs> 
So. If that left hand unit had gone full 12 inches forward, they'd have probably been out of arc of that long axe unit. Um, yeah. And at this uh, point, uh, Matt can kind of play chicken with his one long axe forward against several palace guard hordes and yeah. push up the rest of his units while his palace guard hordes are trying to get the charge off. Just I'd buy time while you clear up the right flank. Yeah, I mean, both the, with the left-hand side and the central palace guard horde could really have just pushed really far forward um, and just gave the long axe very little time to um, uh, very few decisions that they need to go straight in uh, or just turn and accept a, a quite a painful death. And he would have, there's nothing else mm -hmm. on that flank that could have threatened them. Right. No, so, because the, uh, the young axe are out of the forest so they can't see. So if he had moved both palace guards straight, 12 inches straight up, uh, they can only be charged by the long axe. The uh, the ushers uh, aren't in position to help this turn either. Hmm. Well, I see yeah. what he does with the silver breeze. Yeah, sorry. No, no problem. Just the fact that he has that his that horde is floating right now. Like you mentioned, it's not supported. Nothing else can help. It's out by itself completely. Um, you guys, is there any reason why he wouldn't just throw the battle cast forward fourteen inches? That's where I was looking force, at. Yeah. Right, They're force that engagement right now, next turn. He solves that problem, turns and goes this way. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason why he wouldn't do that? Nah. I, I, that's what I was just looking for to see if they have Pathfinder, but they don't. But you don't need it with Nimble. You can just sit right just in front of the forest and then push yeah. it. Because the three hindered hordes is good at doing a long act hold. Yeah. Yep. And because of the the heavy infantry base size, you can hit three palace guard hordes against that long axe horde if you really yes, wanted to. Really. Yeah, yeah. Can, can the long axe horde actually back off enough to get out of range of those uh, palace guard hordes, or is he... He can, uh, which is why I don't like Kevin's uh, slower play right. here on the left, because if, if I'm mad, I'm, I'm playing chicken with that long axe. Like, I'm going to back yeah. up. Back up. <laughs> All he has to do is back up an inch, and he's... Uh, and he's suddenly out of charge range of all three palace guard hordes. Yeah, he's essentially and... negating a thousand points just by that one motion, right? Yep. And every turn he does that, he's got eight thousand other buddies coming up the other up the other flank. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then well, also you're, you're looking at well, four unit strength, I'm keeping I'm twelve I'm unit I'm strength from crossing the board. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, if they if they were able to gauge early, then they're then going to start to be able to threaten the flank to the orcs. Um, mm -hmm. Because if he was pushed up right now, what do you do? The orcs come down the middle, um, and then in turn two, palace, two palace guard hordes are in the flank. Uh, but there you go. and and also in the woods, where despite yep. the way that Matt is playing, not everything has Pathfinder, and so he would be hindered every time he charges if he wants to get in there. And you're fighting on his side of the table. Ugh. Yeah, which is the palace guard horde with fury, the one in the middle, and then the one on Correct. the right hand side has got the sharpness. Is that right? Yes. So the sharpness does negate the uh, the hinder. Um, they'll hit just like normal palace guard horde. Yeah, which I'm I just thinking the of to... how much you you can expect them to do against defense five. I'm just thinking on the counter charges. If he was then charged by any of the other units, he's going to delete whatever he ends up hitting in return if they don't kill him there. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the palace guard with sharpness uh, can expect to do about 10 wounds uh, hindered uh, against defense five. So he will need help to take out the uh, long axe in one go, but he doesn't. Oh, yeah, he does have the Bane Chant, yeah. So that's uh, looking more towards uh, the danger zone with, what, what, 14 wounds? Let's see what he's doing with these Silver Bees. So he's moved the ones in the middle backwards. I'm assuming they're still in range of the, the Morax troops. Um, yeah, the they're still in range. And then the one... Uh, these guys on the right are not a range of the Morax troop. It looks like they're going after long axes. I don't like them moving forward. Um, actually, it looks like it looks like this uh, second from right one can still bail to the left if he needs to. 
I don't know why you put the battle cats there, because all you're doing is giving cover. Like, they're not chaffing anything, they're not blocking the charge. So, but... Are they blocking the charge to the, uh, the crudges on slashes? Mm -hmm. They're out of range. Yeah, these guys, uh, I mean, he does have haste on them, um, so. Let's see, 18, 20. Yeah, they're still out of range, even with, even with haste. And you're out of range of that crusher. Really, is blocking ch uh, charge from this one crusher. Is uh, it I don't know if that's worth giving up cover. Is it, are the battle cats in range of the wing slasher? Are they. They're speed 7. No, I'm uh, thinking so they're in range of the long axis and currently. I'm thinking in reverse. Range. Is the, uh, the Crudron Slasher in range of the Battle Cat, so next time he could charge over and attack the Battle Cat and then really put the pressure on on that flank? Yes, he is in range of the Battle Cats. See, that's almost like picking up a chaff unit for free, isn't it? Almost. Yeah, I don't know, I've done that. Don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I. I always assume everybody else knows more than me, but I'm looking at this and going, mm, right? If there's genius here, I don't see it. Uh, no, I don't think so. This is my lovely wife, Katie. Oh, good. Enough. Yes. <laughs> hey, okay. Does he, does he know that his shot bows are only 18 inch? Uh, he's in range, isn't he? We worked it out, is that right? Yes, um, he is in range. That's that blue line that's barely touching. No, I mean, I mean, is, does he think they're twenty-four so he could fire at, say, the the dragons instead? And that's we'll why see, won't we? Oh, he's done uh, six wounds to that uh, uh, yeah. to that front one after the first silver round. Not, not the round. Right. Yeah, it looks like he's firing lightning bolts at the same target to make sure they're dead. Because uh, right yeah. now he's on a seven to kill. Yeah. Yeah, you pile into it until it's gone. Then you move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. can't afford if, for them if they could be wait, if they could be wavered, um, it might be worth leaving some wounds on them. But since they are fearless, yeah, you just right. go ahead and try to take them out. Yep. Right. So that's that another couple of damage. Who's on eight? And now on a five to kill. Mm-hmm. Did you stop that rally? I think uh, they are within. The mm -hmm. one with eight wounds are within. Uh, the one that he's now targeting are outside. Oops. So with a lucky shot, he could uh, he could pick those up. Mm. You know what would be as well. He'll roll a three, won't he, with his uh, his nerve roll? Would have killed the one without rally, and <laughs> the one with rally survives. You know, yeah. Die. Ooh, not a great shot from the broomstick. Uh, the elite does convert one to bring it back to uh, the four wounds. Uh, that's not I mean, bad. That's a, that's a uh, that's a seven to kill, and they are inspired though, so that's uh, that's more likely to stay than not. Uh, oh, there we go. I was wondering if any of the other silver breeze units were also in range, but. Only in range of the crusher. Ooh. Ooh, one hit. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, one hit. Boy. Oh, oh, boy. Uh, the uh, the elite's uh, uh, one wound, which is uh, unfortunate, but not too much outside of what you would expect to do. But they're only 10 12, so I'd lucky a lucky nerve roll and they could waver him. Mm -hmm. What are you hoping for? Just be too, yeah, nothing. Yep. That's a shame. It'd have, it'd have had six hits there if it um, not given cover up. Oh, yeah, because he was on sixes, wasn't he? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Uh, Nervous picked up the first more axe troop. Okay. If you were mad, uh, what do you think of his decisions to put the, more, the troops in front of the regiments when there's this much shooting across from them? I think if you're going to do that, you need to have both of them rallied at least. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a shit ton of nerves, is that? Even on the troop. Mm -hmm. 
so you can afford to do it because you 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 know you're saving two extra unit strength to recoup to a regiment, aren't you? Right. Yeah. It's three times the unit strength in a regiment, so it's worth protecting them over the troops, I think, and using the troops to soak up a bit of fire. But uh, if I was doing that, then I'd like to make sure they were both valid. Yeah, and also you'd push your units as far forward as possible, so I don't quite see where the Morax mm -hmm. haven't gone as far as they can. Right. Um, and the, uh, yeah. the drum as well, but this is the thing I find with the drum on foot, you've got to place him perfectly at the start. And he picks up the second one there. as well. Oh, does he? Oh, well, did it. Oh. Yeah, if it had been rallied. Yeah, the, been the rally fine. would have saved him on the rear. Oh, man. Um, and without the rally, it's just enough. And I think a lot of that comes back to deployment. If you look at where the war drum is, if it had made just a little bit of a larger gap to fit through, because he'd been trying to get all through mm -hmm. the rest through the terrain before it going to happen anyway. If it made just a bit of a bigger gap, that war drum would have been in line with them and they'd all been rallied. Yep. I, mean, yeah. I was going to say, if he would just shifted slightly over to the right, he could have just kept pace with the... The regiment, but he's been slowed down by the young axe not being able to go up the double into the wood. I made the, yeah. the, the same mistake with a battle shrine. Oh, he wavers the uh, pressure too with a, with a nine. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, Sometimes that's it works. Yeah. Oh my god! Right? Better to be lucky than good, eh? <laughs> Seriously. Definitely, yeah. Uh, the number one strategy is your all better dice. <laughs> We bring up a point about deployment, right? And the idea, though, one of the things that I have found is when you take a look at people's deployment at, at a lot of these times when I've been watching these battle reports, deployment doesn't happen. Here's all my stuff. Here's all your stuff. It's I set down a thing, you set down a thing, and it kind of develops based on your attitude about deployment, right? So in this mm -hmm. instance, I can kind of tell that um, he put down the battle cast. It looks like he put them down first to like as, as, as crash drops and then mm -hmm. had an idea behind it. Matt may have started putting down his stuff, and then when you take a look at it, you know how he, he looks like he made the conscious decision not to deploy on the one side, but having the war drum slightly out of place, do you think that was because of he doesn't know whether or not he's going to be able to go first? He wants to make sure he gets the biggest amount of, and obviously he wants to make sure he gets the most number of units in that bubble ahead of time before he sees where all the silver, bla silver breeze are placed, right? And so that leads to these unintended consequences as the game goes on, right? So I don't yeah. know whether it's a question of, boy, you should have thought of that. Maybe he was thinking of something else to mitigate yeah, another I, problem when he was setting up, right? You know? Yeah, I mean, that's a very good point. He was probably thinking, because uh, in the beginning, everything in that bubble was, was covered. And it wasn't until the, the young axe couldn't enter the terrain that the, uh, the right Morax troop got left, left out. Right. Uh, <clears throat> so it, it, he was probably thinking of a first turn alpha strike, uh, a shooting alpha strike. Right. Um, and then he, he might have not realized that the young axe uh, kept him from going forward um, and decided to get the extra inch or two instead of keeping the more axe further back. Right. Yeah. It's one of those things you look back and go, uh, you kick yourself a little bit, don't you? Um, but there we go. I, I've that... had a lot of those games. Right. Where you, <laughs> you set up, you set up, you got, I got a battle group over here, battle group over here. I think you're doing a great mm -hmm. job. And you actually look at the table and you go, oh, what have I done to myself? Right? <laughs> and we don't know the deployment, so we don't know if the crushers went down first, which in my opinion they should always do. But right. uh, we did hear Matt talk about how this is a, the orc list that he's still trialing. And when you're trialing a list, sometimes you don't um, do not do deployment tricks like deploying all crushers first because you're like, Okay, I know these guys have to deploy this way. And since right. I don't know my list well enough, I'm just going to go ahead and do it and let the enemy deal with it. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you can pick holes in anybody's deployment, can't you? I think in, I mean, even things like having um, the crudges and slashes in the, in the, uh, behind the lines as well just gives a little bit more breathing room if the elves did go first, that they can move forward mm -hmm. and not be threatened by the slashes, which is, you know, I see a lot of people people doing it, and it just gives people a little bit more space to move into. Um, the the slasher is being on the right flank that does keep the silver breeze honest on uh, I'm going forward because uh, then the slashers could just jump right over. Um, and slashers uh, tend to work very well in pairs, uh, so I, I don't fault them for the point there. And, and this way, if there is a gap in the line, so I just can plug it real quick. Yeah. 
Now I'd like, well, now I'd really like to see him just start pushing forward. Go for those dragons right up in front. Yep. Because what, what are they going to do? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Right? I mean, me with arrows. Go on. Yeah, send it over. See what happens. Right. Give the battle cats a flank. Actually, go sit next to the um, obstacle. Fly all the way down there. Sit next to it. Turn a little bit. Go into the flank with your battle cats. And okay, I can pin me down, but I'm charging the next turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you're not getting away. I'm shooting. And yeah. Get the scattering. Away. Yep. Oh, and, then, and then you force uh, you force them to decide between dealing with a dragon in your in your lines or shooting at the defense four unit strength behind it. Yep. Mm. And it's cinematic and cool. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Most importantly, I mean, yeah. you've got the most dragons. Make use of it. I'm like, this, okay, this so he's moving. He's you, moved the young axe forward there. Yeah. The young axe have moved forward. Um, right now, they are out of charge range from this palace guard horde. So it does not matter that they're giving a flank. The long axe have backed up. Um, so now, once again, you have all these palace guard hordes not doing anything. Um, the sharpness one can charge the young axe, which. They charge them, they're going to be eating charges from long axes and more axes. Yeah. And so that's a, yeah, and dragons. Uh, can he can he get the battle course. cats into a position to block the long axe if he did it? Uh, these guys are in it within terrain, so no. Yeah. Uh, and they also cannot hit, uh, enter their terrain. Are they not got uh, Pathfinder, have they? Oh, right, okay. nope. no. They do not. Just nimble. I was checking that. Um, and then being speed seven, the ones on the right can't get far enough forward to block the Morax. The, uh, yeah. the Silver Bridge can block the Morax. So if he does charge the, uh, the Young Axe, he might sacrifice the Silver Breeze uh, in order to protect them. I mean, going back to like, you know, we were talking about deployment, etc. I mean, uh, it. It is hard when you put it down what to kind of see how the how it's going to develop every single time, especially as you put in each individual unit. I've struggled a little bit with universal battle because it's not like in real life where you can just kind of see the lines. You just get down on the yeah. table and you can see mm -hmm. how the army goes out. You suddenly think you realize that oh no, that is six inches. I didn't realize it was uh, that close, and I didn't realize I just not positioned it to go past the the tree line, that kind of thing. So it's a really easy thing to do in this kind of format. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, no, it's, yeah, it, it's learning. It's learning uh, spatial recognition all over again, playing in universal battle versus yeah. in real life. You almost got the dragon, uh, the slasher in there. Yeah, it was yeah. almost really cool. <laughs> I don't know why you're trying to avoid them though. It's regiments of silver brain. Just go fight them. <laughs> yeah, it's you okay. It, it, it's one of those things where sometimes people just get afraid of being charged, even if it's you know being charged by silver breeze. Um, now that we're talking all this crap, though, I hope the Silver Breeze charge something and kill it. I mean, I don't know what yeah. it is, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it before. I had a, I didn't realize, you know, like, some guy left a, a rear open on a nimble charge from Silver Breeze into his dragon and I one shot with his air going, what can happen? <laughs> uh, say that. Say that. That's a, nice, that's man. Attack, so I've got a Bane chat nearby in a melee bar now. That's, that's, that's good going, mm. isn't it? Yeah. He, he does, that is that Archmage on the right hand side, the one with the boomstick. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So they, he doesn't have Bane Chant. So he's so a he has, uh, This Bane Chant is on a speed nine mount, so that's a, uh, a twenty-one inch range. Yep. So he can Bane Chant anything pretty much up to the house. No, do more with the crutches. Yeah. <laughs> they almost are jamming themselves up, aren't they? Get out of the way! No, you get out of the way. <laughs> We also have to uh, keep in mind that uh, I know both Tom and I tend to be very aggressive in our play styles, so we're oh. definitely complaining about lack of aggressiveness right now. I think, I don't know, about, uh, there's a time and a place to be aggressive, and both of them have had their time and place to be aggressive in certain areas, and they haven't taken that choice. Mm -hmm. um, See, that, that then kind of, I think, that plays into the elf hands, doesn't it? Because at the moment, he's going to be able to continue to kite him a little bit on the right-hand side here. He's got to be a yeah. bit more aggressive over on the left. Right. But he could just keep pinging a few wounds here and there, 
Um, the long axe are probably still, you can probably still threaten those with only really the young axe and, and the long axe really going to be able to do anything about it or and maybe the crusher. But it's we'll it's funny when you talk about aggression. So like on, on the right hand side of the field, if I was Matt, I would push, 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 push and just clear everything out. On the left-hand side, he's playing the best delay. I mean, that's how I do it with dwarves: is you delay, 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 but everything else get into place. He's playing the left-hand side of the table really well, right? Yeah. Not really committing, moving up, backing up, negating yeah. all those hordes of palace guard, but he's not taking advantage by pushing up the other side. So, you know, aggression. I think when when I take a look at a table, I try to break it into pieces. Where do I mm -hmm. really want to go? And where do I want to sit? You know, and you can't. In, in this instance, I don't think it would do Matt any good to be aggressive everywhere. You know, I think he's playing really smart. I wish he was more aggressive on the one side, though. Like you said, just drop a dragon in the middle and say, what are you going to do? You know? <laughs> See, I'm not sure about this with the Palace Guard Hordes either. He's just he's just aging forward. Fiddling around. Well, I mean, the elves out there, so they've made a very nice, pretty line. Is what <laughs> well, I don't think it is. If you put a ruler on that one, that is not level. <laughs> <laughs> Get a spirit level on this now, quick. Right. Um, I don't think he's realized he can't do that yet. I'm going to double check, but I'm fairly 99% certain they can't do that. They haven't got Pathfinder. They don't. They're, they're nimble and vicious. I literally just checked. Uh, so, I'm all sure. right. For this game, they are now Pathfinder. <laughs> Apparently, everything's Pathfinder in this game. Let's be honest. Yeah, we have uh, a long axis yeah. of Pathfinder and then yeah, uh, yeah. long axis of Pathfinder, apparently. Man. Yeah, they are. Yeah, he, he shouldn't do that. That's not. McCheaterson. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> if they're just a shoot and a half pathfinder, that means they have it, right? That's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess uh, I guess it's fair with uh, they each get one, right? Yeah, yeah. They're going to yeah, right. That's it. It's like a good roll and a bad roll. You know, everybody owes everybody a double one, don't they? <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I mean, he, I could, he could still back those long axe up again, the whole, and just he go. can back the long axe up and <clears throat> get out of range of all of them. Um, his morax can charge the sharpness guys. He'll do so alone, but that can that can uh, clean him up or damage him decently well for yeah. There's no to there. no. later. I'll make a mess. You know, neither neither list has. Okay. Probably going to be the option because I reckon they're going to get shot. So once they're up to ten damage and they've got no damage mitigation, you might as well send them into the horde. Yep. Like, yep. Here's ten damage and, and then a die tower. It's like tossing yeah. a grenade. Yeah. It's just, I don't understand why he's not moved the morax in the mill forward as well. He's got them on the hill, just hanging out. I mean, what, yeah, he, what it's as if he wants to get that thunderous charge, but he doesn't <laughs> yeah, need it. Come towards me, please. So I can just run off this hill. <laughs> if, I mean, if he was life. facing across from from Palace Guard, that makes sense. But he's facing across from Silverbreeze, who are like <laughs> they, they shoot as well as they fight. So they're just like, okay, we'll just shoot you on that hill. Well, he's done the same thing with the Palace Guard on the left. He's kept them on the hill for the plunderers, but long out dropped phalanx. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Oh, you came with spears. That is cheating. <laughs> so is he still fiddling around at the moment with the silver breeze before he starts shooting where's he got to he's got to really make the most of this shooting opportunity which he hasn't really uh, deserved to you know, try and nail a lot of that cheap unit strength uh, easy to kill unit strength while he can yeah, I mean, honestly, if I was him, I'd, I'd build this unit right here out to the left, and they can jump in with the Morax and pepper in again. Yeah, he can block himself from being attacked by a slasher through the building, so he can mm -hmm. stop himself from being charged. You've got two more turns of shooting. He's giving you two turns of shooting here, so you can, realistically, you might be able to pick up the regiment of those uh, long acts on the right, and you will, mm -hmm. pick, you will pick up probably both Morax regiments at this rate. Yeah, because uh, I mean, you're, you're looking at at least two more turns, uh, and that's and that, that's not including going to battle cats in the way. Yeah, and that's the right. with five scarring units and not much unit strength for uh, no loss of his own yet. He, I mean, he's going to lose it eventually, but take the kills while you can get him. I think. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I'd like to see um, Matt moonwalk his uh, uh, crusher on the right because obviously he can just individual turn it backwards and then use the wavered back step to just moonwalk towards the enemy. So he could have done that for <laughs> him as well. Oh, yeah, they all just I think he's, a, he's yeah. afraid of uh, getting charged, which again, it's, if they get charged, then they're in knife fight range. Yeah. I hate that you can do that. It's spam and fight. Yeah, I hate yeah, that. It's, it's so, <laughs> so gamey, right? It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty ridiculous. Right. Oh, dear. But the only thing is, if he does moonwalk like that, what it, if a Silver Breeze does charge him, are they going to be counter? Yeah, they probably would be, wouldn't they? Yeah, because there'd still be an arc of the. The long axe. So yeah, you might as well. So the, uh, he's measuring for this, but I don't think that's. Is that in range? Oh yes, it is in range with me. Uh, so yeah, you can charge one slasher in. It looks like, um, and then you'll get flanked by another one. And we'll see. Uh, unless you roll one on there. So I don't know why he wants to give any charges at this point in time. Why does he... I mean, could he not back off far enough to stay out of range? Uh, not with also being in range of shooting the Morax. He's right mm. on the edge right there. But surely with a, if you could get two lightning bolts onto them and then one uh, shooting, you could use the other one to shoot the uh, Morax over there. I don't know. Over I, here, I yeah. I just wouldn't allow him to get into combat at all yet. Just Why, why um, do it? Yeah, that's definitely a uh, good point. Um, maybe he's more worried because right now the Morax can charge Palscar, and that's the only thing that can charge, other than uh, than Crushers. Mm -hmm. and he's backing up his Silver Breeze, and in doing so, he can only shoot these guys and cover. Well, the Battlecats are there anyway, so yeah. Backing these guys up again. I think he's using the, um, not the far right, but the one uh, just next to the far right unit of the uh, Silver Breeze. I think he's using them to cover the battle cats on the, uh, in the centre. Yep. And, I mean, uh, it's a good idea. If, if they do charge the Silver Breeze too, then he's, uh, I mean, he's got a double flank. So it means that you either accept the double flank or you accept the front and the rear. That's mm -hmm. essentially the same thing. Oh, he's engaging the long axe. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I think people that's interesting. So that's usually code for I don't think that's a good move. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, that is very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't see what he what he gets from this. It's a turn um, out. Yeah. Just, they're swarms, aren't they? They're not going to cause that much damage, are they, really? What, they got vicious? And no, it's like nine, nine attacks, attacks with, uh, with vicious. They're not cavalry, though. So they're hitting on gonna... fours. Yeah, yeah. So they're not going to yeah. suffer the, the phalanx issue. Three wounds. Two and a half wounds. Let's be generous, right? I mean, a lot. Uh, you're, 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 looking, you're looking for one wound. Uh, the defense five. Oh, the defense five? Uh, vicious... Oh, yeah, nothing. Man. Yep. That's... So you're, you're looking at three hits and then maybe... Uh, and one wound, maybe one at uh, two if, if you get a vicious reroll. I'm surprising nobody. That's uh, exactly where the arrows are going. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> Didn't bring any shields. This is what you get. Uh, a lot of elites. Uh, <laughs> still ends up rolling a little below average of only six, um, but does oh. two damage. Not a great start. Uh, it does have a lot more shooting to come, come back to it. It's about average, to be fair. No, that was a bad roll. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the elite helped, brought it back up to six, uh, and four damage there. I think uh, an average damage roll for Silvery's because he's defense four is like what, three? Because you're looking at about seven to eight hits. Yeah, three now. Well, you got elite, aren't you? So you're looking at yeah. 16 attacks, really. So you're looking at eight and then four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the defense four out of the all right. Yeah, I mean, yes. you'd have thought a fluctuation between somewhere about three and five is about right, isn't it? But yeah. okay. mm -hmm. 
A little the two wounds is low, off. but it's not UV dice roll. <laughs> It's not good. It's not good. Hey, yeah, it's elite. Three more. And that's what I feel like uh, elite usually actually does is it makes sure that you actually hit an average without an elite. <laughs> I like that. It's it's uh, it doesn't give you any bonus. It just makes you do what you should have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's 14 damage. That's like a double one, isn't it, on those Moraks? So it is, back. even uh, even with the war drum. So he skipped the nerve without shooting the other guys, and he has picked them up. Let's How see if he remembers to shoot these two uh, silver threes. You're fair, they, uh, they aren't going to, they can't target them anyway with anything in there. A little out of turn sequence that. I'm sure everyone has done before. Yeah. Oh, no. He's, um, no. And he's also he's forgot combat. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> As an elf player sometimes does. No, oh, yeah, go cap. Yeah, he hits pretty well with six attacks. It's got yeah. vicious. Uh, no damage, <laughs> but he does have vicious. Come, vicious, roll it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Roll the hell. Oh. <laughs> Amazing. Oh dear. All right, now we're moving on to the top of turn three, and neither forest has gotten anybody but a battle cat um, over the center line. Yeah, I mean, it, even with those silver breeze had shot the um, uh, the long axe, we're not talking about huge damage, are we? We're talking maybe two or three damage, really, over the, all those shots. Yeah. Yeah, two or three damage, um, but they aren't rallied, so that is a decent chance for a waiver. Like it, it, ten or eleven. I mean, by decent, I mean, I mean, like yeah. a twenty percent chance. Yeah. <laughs> um, but more importantly. He has no way to remove those wounds, so that means next turn you'll have a pretty likely chance to waver. Yep. And the following turn after that, it's it's uh, you have a chance to kill. Yeah. You notice know, the other thing as well is because of the way they're positioned, they're, they're still only coming at you in five inches a turn. They're still going to be out of range mm -hmm. next turn. Yeah. Uh, so now those crushers are finally moving forward and doing the job. Yep. Go on, lads. <laughs> Is it, they were worried about the cats, weren't they? That's what it was. They were going, oh, I don't know. <laughs> They've got vicious. That's what it is. Had a bad experience all, with a black cat once. That's from our into the long act. You broke her all and went, that ah, cat's are fine. What are we on about? And then now they're not going to go out and find it. Oh, I love it. Ah, so is he, is he going to go in with a long axe on the left hand side or is he going to. He's just going to keep all back in. If he keeps backing up, I mean, the scenario is is invade. And, right? I mean, eventually, if he keeps backing up, and there's going to be three units of palace guard doing nothing on his side of the table, and that'll end up being a problem. Yeah, and he's got, well, he's already lost five unit strength already, hasn't he, from the, um, the Morax going down. And that's a lot of his punch as well. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you're, you're talking about. Um, the other one. combat units will hit on a four. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be hard for him. I mean, what has he got left that can actually take on the palace guard and actually cause damage? Um, Dragons in flanks. If you'd have, uh, if you'd have done what I said earlier, it'd be all right. <laughs> Let's get right yeah. in his face. Come on, do it. <laughs> do it. Do it now. Can he actually get past those cats? I don't think he can without being within an inch of them, can he? So he's going to struggle to go down that avenue. Yeah, I, I think he wants to be able to mark the turn after, but... Ah, right, there's a picture of the captain in the right place now. Yeah. So what do we think? I mean, um, is he, is he better off just to come, come down the right-hand side here? The, the right side more? Yeah. 
Yes, absolutely. Keep the cover in between you. Get on that side of the table. Deal with me over here, right? Yeah. And then use the crudgers to go and just punch Silver Breeze in the face and make them stay honest and run away and, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's we we agree. One, this this is a great plan. Should have happened started yeah. la last turn. They should have two turns ago. Yeah. He's still got a crusher in the center as well, hasn't he? Hidden behind the crudger. I like that. He's like, he just too. behind his boss. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So he's definitely thinking about it. Did he actually move the? So he's moved the long axe down. Were they actually able to squeeze past, or they not being within an inch of those um battle cats? I'm no. Sure the We've also lost the host. By the looks like. <laughs> Let's fill in. So, <laughs> anybody got any party tricks? There we do. You know, you can mention in the comment. Apparently, uh, both you and uh, and Rossi are apparently looking very dapper this morning, which means that I'm not. So yeah. I'm perfectly happy with yeah, it. Sorry about that, guys. Uh... <laughs> when you're that handsome, John, you don't need a shirt, dude. You don't need a collar. That's true. Yeah, just that. relaxed. How's that Chills. for bravado? Right? <laughs> oh, dear. Well, here we go. We'll come back and go, like, the entire thing has changed. <laughs> I was just like, where's everybody gone? Everything's dead. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, oh, so he's changed the, the long X. The long X have gone back the other way. Boy, I don't like that. Yeah, do it. Go on. Do it. You don't like the long axe going to the left? Oh, he, yeah. was, he was just looking on the right hand side. He just couldn't squeeze between the battle cats. He just thought yeah, that's, one of those other ones he just kind of slightly missed. Gotta be, right? I mean, if it, at this stage of the game, I would have thrown as much unit strength as I could on the other side of the of the wall and the wall in the building. Mm -hmm. Try to grab some cover. Try to, you know, force Tom to come over and, or uh, mm -hmm. force Keith to come over there and deal with him over there. Meanwhile, the crudgers are running around causing problems. But See, he could position that slasher where he had there and just make sure that his flank was exposed to the silver breeze, but they couldn't fit in using the building. Right. So he could have put himself relatively safe mm -hmm. there and still threaten the center. So that would have been an option. Um, and then maybe use the other slasher to try and Back him up a little bit, bit more. Yeah, the be, it's this little courtyard, essentially. We've got the goals. But I think he's going to do the same thing again and just kind of hold back a little bit. We had a land in this little courtyard uh, the in the building. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think he should listen to Tom. Tom's no like he's playing directly in the less hand, I think, so that's man is. I've, I've got lots of experience playing with lots of dragons. Just push them forward. Go ask some questions. Do it. Yeah, but usually, Tom, <laughs> you've got another three dragons on top of the two that you've already got. Another four, at least. Right? Another four, at least. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you, one goes down, again. you've got redundancy. I don't yeah. think he's got the same redundancy here. No, but it's, it's, the same, it's the same principle, isn't it? Right? Most, most of the time, those dragons that are studying not really being that aggressive, they're creating opportunity for the other dragons to be aggressive. I think I played. You were the only guy who actually beat one of the dragon lists, actually, uh, when I had seven dragons that time. Um, yeah, two and a half thousand points uh, managed to. You played a seven dragon list, Tom? Yeah, yeah, second edition. Yes, he played a seven dragon list. Yeah, there's a yeah. video out there somewhere, I think, with it on. Um, that was the six, now the only video was the six dragon. The seven dragon was. Um, that turn I, I got zombie trolls. I used all seven dragons to charge a unit of zombie trolls across the board. Yes. And, won. and then they That's the video you can see. <laughs> the video is me just going right, and yeah. then he reaches these these zombie trolls go <laughs> one into a wizard. I'm going, yeah, that looks really good. <laughs> oh, it were amazing! Um, it were amazing. <laughs> I killed that wizard. I got an overrun, an instant overrun onto his second wizard, mm -hmm. and then I killed that. I'd had another instant <laughs> overrun to a flank over there, a low high, and turn one. I'd have zombie trolls in his back lines. Turn one, and he'd be three units down. I got oh, nine yeah. hits with them, and I rolled six ones, and I'm there going. 
And then the entire thing fell off. <laughs> I, I used my entire, I used the six hundred points of my army to get a turn one charge off. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a great it. idea. And they had a load of dragons in range of uh, 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 a Loki. <laughs> But it was, it was just obviously a Gandalf moment, wasn't it? These just shall not pass. <laughs> Screw you, zombie trolls. Um, <laughs> it's the only thing that allowed me to win. Have no, we missed anything exciting at the moment? Are we, are we, it... No, we've missed nothing. Uh, young acts have charged the battle cats, uh, which is pretty much the only thing you could have done. Right. Um, the question, though, is that's where he clears him out. What's he going to do? Yeah. But there's also a decent chance that he doesn't clear him out. Yeah. And he's only looking at about four hits. Um, yeah. And if he misses any of his uh, two wound rolls, then all of a sudden you're going to need like an eight or a nine to kill him. That is the problem with taking regiments. I know you get, you know, you get you get more unit strength if you take more regiments across the table because you know three to four versus regiment to horde. But boy, the output, the concentrated output is way is a lot lower. You know, mm -hmm. really for regiments, like they're, they're the most efficient as far as unit strength and nerve go. Yeah. Um, as far as point for point. Sure. Um, the, the thing is, I really don't like heavy infantry regiments. Uh, it doesn't really matter in this list uh, or in, in this matchup, but like heavy infantry regiments cannot corkscrew with, with each other um, against anything like large infantry or regular infantry, so that really limits your targets. And in this list, it doesn't matter because the only things he's facing are other cavalry and right. cores, so. Right. But it, it really limits the, the utility you have. So yeah, at least the yeah. crushers have gone forward now. They're uh, raced all the way down. Yep. Actually threatened the Silver Breeze turn three. <laughs> yep. After they've already deleted uh, the units of Morax. So, so it looks. Oh man, he took that horde and he backed it up out of the woods. Yep, yep. So Whoa. all he's doing is delaying the inevitable, but he's not going to get charged next turn, and he might be able to get a charge in if the palace guard take on the, the young axe. But he's not going to yeah. delete a palace mm -hmm. guard horde in one shot, is he? I mean, you know, you're talking. No. Um, I mean, he's got a multi charge setup. The more axe will be in. The more axe on the hill will be in. The, one of the dragons will be in, and the long axe will be in. Yeah. I mean, you get into a bit of a trade at that point. Um, if I mean, the Morax coming in hindered. I gotta, I'm not going to cause that amount, huge amount of damage. But I suppose two units mm -hmm. into one, you're going to get a good chance. But you'll have two Palace Guard hordes waiting as well, won't you? Yeah. Oh, the, uh, the Long Axe have only done four yeah. wounds, but a nerve roll of ten uh, doesn't matter. Mm. I think. Here we go. I think. Uh, I think you have to. Dice for over here. Oh yeah, hundred percent. No reason not to. Go on over and do it. Yeah, there's no way he'd give up a flank, and dice and forward means that if they do charge the crushers, then they could potentially be in position to support. <laughs> Well, it. You guys looking at the comments? Uh, yeah, I just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Keith is a jerk. I would not say that. <laughs> I would not say that. I, I'm not a huge fan of taking only three units out of an army and going, here's my army. Right? I think that there's actually <laughs> um, there's something to be said for a uh, variety of the units on the table because it'll give you more tools to work with. Even if this is the quote unquote best yeah. thing. It does a thing. You need things to do multiple things. You know? That flex you're giving up that flexibility. Not unless okay. you use Revenant in which case they can do all the things. Which one? <laughs> Not unless you just use Revenant Cav. Is a true for the regiment and a hall, they all do different jobs. It's great. Yeah. That's, the true thing is that the really chat, the regiment is uh I guess super thick chat. Mini anvil. Mini the board is all of the above. Yeah. And he's picked up the uh, the other battle cats uh, with some pretty good rolling yeah. um, and, a, and a great nerve roll. So now we are looking for uh, top of turn four. Well, you'll notice that then long after the right didn't over him. 
Yeah. Because what, what we're looking at at the moment, what I mean, you look at the three Palace Guards, well, that's 12 unit strength, isn't it? Possibly getting into the other side. Yep. And then he he's possibly trading maybe one of those to get both the Young Axe and the Long Axe. But then he's got, what, then six, nine unit strength on the other three regiments and two slashes coming down. So that, at this moment, the Silver Reeds, you reckon bugging out is an option so they could just get out of the way because they've been given enough time to maneuver into a position where they could get into the other half but maybe on the left hand side rather than going through the middle yep yeah because you can move them up to really just move into that bit of difficult terrain on the left hand side continue shooting um the crusher might get in but crusher hindered is not going to guarantee your wound um mm -hmm. we'll see He's got a lot of options on this. Little sneaky bow catch down there in the middle. Yeah. The old crusher is not mighty. Excuse me. Uh, That's definitely something I forget all the time still. Yeah. Uh, you can just walk through individuals. Is he going to block up the Morax by doing that? I don't think he is, is he? He's going to be... I'd have been tempted to go for the war drum if he could reach it because you'd. Uh... I think he's doing that with the silver reed. Oh no! Wait. Hey. All right. That's oh. mad. What? <laughs> what am I looking at? Okay, so uh, he, he's going to do at? a double. He's doing a double charge with the silver breeze, which now means that. What is it? Twelve. Oh my 14, god! Sixteen of his unit strength is over on the left side. And um, Matt just does not have enough stuff to kill that many yeah. things. All and right. here comes everybody. Right. Yeah, everybody in the pool, right? That's interesting. That's cool. <laughs> is that interesting? Is it? That's Tom? definitely <laughs> that, that code. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I, don't I think this why. is the uh, interesting in a good way for me, at least. Uh, we're finally seeing some aggression from one of the players, and we're going to see overwhelming unit strength on the on the left. Right. And even uh -huh. if he loses one of that one of those units, you're looking at about twelve to fourteen unit strength that will be on Matt's side of the board. Yeah. And I don't know if uh, uh, Matt even has that many unit strength left. Yes, six, eight, eleven. Matt only has 15, 16 unit strength left in the game right now. But he could lose both of their Silver Breeze units quite easily, couldn't he? Especially on a double one. Imagine a double one. Anyway. How um, dare you? <laughs> how, how dare I? <laughs> um, but so the, the only one slasher can see the Silver Breeze. The other one is out of arc. Yeah, um, and a single slasher is not guaranteed to pick up a, a Silver Breeze regiment. Yeah, it's only if he maybe gets a flank or or the rear double one, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but the and also you're going to have hindered from the long axe, aren't they? Because the long axe aren't going to be able to. Uh, they're going to be able to reach, but they're just not going to be able to do that much damage. Although you will tie a silver breeze in, I suppose. Um, but then, what do you do? I suppose all the crushers kind of they go out onto the right hand flank, don't they? I'd have thought. Three crushes against two silver breeze units. You've got a good chance. Um, mm -hmm. But now that middle crush is going to have to go back towards the uh, center. Man. <laughs> there we go. Wow. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> They've got a chance, Hinder. Yeah, he is getting all sorts of aggressive. Why? That slasher wasn't threatening. Hey, I mean, you, you have a decent chance of grounding it. Right? I mean, why Why would he do that? It's, yeah. not, it's not threatening it's not, anybody. It's not minus threatening no business over there. Right? I'll well, send them both into the long axe. Like if you're going to do that, send them both into the long axe. <laughs> yeah. And, in which case, the, the slasher might not even be able to see. Oh, man. Man, 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 man. Else should stick what they're good at shooting. No, don't, don't charge. Shoot. I mean, it's it's a question. It's it's not that. It's a question of target selection. 
Mm-hmm. Right? He he's charging into a dragon. He can't kill it. He's not. It doesn't matter if he sits it down. You know. Yeah. I just don't see it. I mean, he, he could ground it. It doesn't. Then he can't threaten the wizards. Possibly. I mean, the wizards maybe have a bit more of a free reign for that. But those crutches really... running around. But yeah, I see what you're saying. Right. I guess. I guess by sitting them, you're like, oh, stay here. But. But boy, yeah. I don't know. The dragon and the long axe were trying to pin down the silver breeze. Now the silver breeze have kind of it's like they've kind of pinned down the dragon and long axe, but they've pinned down units that want to be fighting them. So they've just left the crushers free now to go after the mages. Instead. Yeah, and he's and he's given and mm-hmm. those units are going to die. Those units are going to die. Yeah, even if he gets a good, decent result with the silver breeze on the uh, on the the long axe, which is not going to happen. But if he gets a lucky one, he's still got two. So crushers. I mean. Yeah. But let's look at it this way, though. The uh, the long axe, <laughs> realistically, are probably going to take two turns unless there's a lucky roll to kill a Silver Breeze regiment. Yeah. That means at top of turn six, they're on their side of the board. So he's giving up two unit strength to keep three unit strength from scoring. Um, and by threatening, uh, by throwing these Silver Breeze up against the. Uh, the slasher, it, it means that slasher, if he gets a wound, uh, can't do anything. Um, which, if he didn't do that, then the slasher could jump back and throw it in the palace guard board. Um, so I, I think uh, I think Kevin's thinking two turns ahead with this move, not next turn. Which is why I don't understand. Tur- turn six. <laughs> yeah, and I'd also then like to have had both Cav go into the axe for that reason. I think it would have been better to yeah. do that. Yeah, because you, you're kind of that. almost guaranteeing three down. Because otherwise you would, I mean, if you until that kill those uh, turn early, the Silver Breeze, you're what you, you're putting in two crushers as well, so that's six attacks. What are they, nerve 14, 16, aren't they, the Silver Breeze? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Fired. And defense four, so the Long Axe is only looking at three to four wounds to turn against them. Yeah. Um, so, uh, honestly, they, they'll struggle to kill them at two turns, although... Um, uh, and like turn seven, they could still be there fighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, if it sent both both regiments in, when that long axe encounters, they'll open up a flank from the other regiment for the turn after that. Right. Good point. Other than that, I mean, you got. So if he doesn't deal with this silver breeze without. Um, then they have a flank anyway that's going to be a hindered flank since they're on the wall. Do you think, like, in, do you think, like, in universe, we're going to charge the light again moment? I think, right, we're going to charge all our light cabin today. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Someone sent the wrong order down. What does it say? Pause for Matt to make his kiddos lunch. Sorry, yes. Nice. He's not Kevin. Oh, really? I'm calling out. Are we going to be here for about like Kevin, not Yeah, right? Grilled cheese all around. Cut off the crust. <laughs> there you go. So we just have to talk about something else, don't we, in the meantime? So, uh, you know, uh, Tom, Tom, you like taking like uh, armies with only a few different unit choices in each, don't you? Right? No. You can <laughs> play a really, really balanced list every single time, but just because lately we've been on a bit of a bender with it, it's, it seems to, the reputation seems to have stuck for some reason. Because <laughs> you keep using them, that's why. Oh. Well, because it's the joke I mean, it turns out to be quite funny and quite good. <laughs> well, that was quick, and we're back. Wow. I was going to say you must have literally just like poured the jar out onto the bread, smeared it around, then have it. <laughs> <laughs> and then ran off again. Threw a box of Cheerios at him. Done. Yeah, that's it. Just boomerang and toast around the corner. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, stuff is happening. Oh, go on, do it. All right, we have lightning bolt against the war drone. Yep. That's probably why I didn't charge him because it's a better chance to pick him up with that. Yeah. Uh, doing two wounds. The total of three, you're looking at an eight to kill. Yeah, yeah. Which there's no more shooting, so I think that was a nerve, so that uh, war drum is fine. 
Silver Breeze, uh, do a mighty seven hits. Woohoo! Against yeah. the uh, Slasher. <laughs> yeah. And three wounds, so that Slasher is grounded. Uh, now, it still has options to get away if it wanted to, but it also just keep fighting. And uh, a nine won't do anything. So now our <laughs> slight cab against Phalanx uh, does six hits anyway. Uh, and two wounds. Uh, there's an outside chance for a waiver here. Need to get the elite. Oh, no, they don't have elite on the... Uh, no, uh, not on the melee. 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 Uh, yep. Useless. That looks like he's moving on without rolling the nerve. It's 56 attacks on the flank. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed in the chat, like uh, Paul there saying uh, he has to perfect the pause with the kids screaming down the microphone. We all know that pain. <laughs> and then uh, nine wounds from the front, so they are officially devastated. With the rally, they won't be devastated, but they are on Snake Eyes. And there's no inspiring nearby. So he has picked them up. Boom. I think that you gotta sidestep the uh, the palace guard forward that way. This silver totally breeze do. can turn. Yep. Either that will turn them first, and then turn the silver breeze units. Um, yeah. You could possibly position the silver breeze to block the flank from the morax. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing is, is the uh, I suppose the palace guard on the left are actually safe, but they're not they're not threatening as much as you'd like, are really? Um, yeah. So even if they were a little bit further forward, you would still be saying, well, um, if they get charged, then the other palace guard horde can charge them in return. But there we go. Huh. That standard bearer is uh, blocking. So the, are the more actually going to get unhindered into the Silver Breeze? Is that? It does look like it. The silver breeze yeah. are sticking out. Mm, um, hindered okay. Moraxes, the silver breeze would have had a decent shot of living. Uh, unhindered one, that's a, that's a tall order. They're going to make a mess. <laughs> that's it. Horses are going to be flying everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially, you're, you're, you're probably going to look at this crud you're joining in on the one. Oh, sure. Um, and uh, these long acts also have a flank, so... Uh, they actually have um, these guys right here. Yeah, you can't move them forward or else the the Crudron Slasher will get them. Because at the moment, I think the Morax mm -hmm. could take that unit of Silver Breeze, so you're then looking at options for other things to do. Yeah. So you, you're almost having to turn the Silver Breeze a full 180, aren't you, really? Just so that you've got the front. Yeah, these Silver Breeze are facing towards the... Uh, the bottom right corner right now. Sure. Uh, so they're ready to receive a charge from the uh, Morax. Uh, the Battle Cats have done two wounds for the uh, Crudger. And it's got in a 12. Oh, it's Crudger's though, yeah. Um, which would have been a, a waiver if it weren't for the War Drum. You know, oh, War Drum. No, I think it's a Crudger in it, so the 13-15. Oh, so that was end of turn three. I thought it was end of turn four. Yeah. So that is uh, my bad, guys. I have to uh, jump the gun a bit. Three? That's surprising. I thought it was four as well. Yeah, I did. Not just because you said so. It's hard to... Go back and work out who went where because we've all been, it's all been absolutely mental in terms of where they've put things, so I can't, I can't work it back and make it happen. Mm -hmm. Well, especially since there's been so much uh, dancing around. Mm. But, you know, first turn, they, they picked up two more axe uh, troops, second turn, they picked up more axe regiment. 
and third turn they charged. Uh, so yeah, it, it is a. There you go. That was bottom of three. So then this is bottom of four now, or top of four. A little more aggressive than and I looks thought. Like a charge. He hits. Which now makes it so that. So position this. Now go ahead, Zoro. Yeah, and now looks like these long these long acts are going to be able to get through these guys before turn six. Um, that, right, the that's what I was going to say. Don't, but uh, it makes it if makes there's only two turns of fighting, then uh, Silver Breeze have a uh, have a pretty good chance of delaying him. But with three, right? Uh, that's that's where I think I really would have liked the double charge into him. It's interesting. Like the Crusher is taking out the Boomstick Archmage, or at least uh, silencing him for a turn. Oh, buddy. Oh, right. I'll let you out. Come on. So yeah, there he is going to crush it into the back of those silver breeze. Um want to see both of them go in there really. It's gonna be interesting interesting to see what he does with these the Crudron Slasher. Ooh, don't think he fit. So, if he, if he manages to kill both of those units of Silver Breeze. All of a sudden, those College Guard are, are yeah. staring down quite a few units. Now, this this uh, Crudget Slasher, do you go ahead and support the College Guard, or do you try to just go ahead and take these guys out, these Silver Breeze out, quickly? Um, I'd try and take... I think you're taking the silver breeze out over on the um, on the right hand side does then free up the slashes to then counter charge later on because they, they're going to be able to threaten from there into the center with the, the, where you can expect the palace guard to go. But absolutely, mm -hmm. and it removes the pressure helping more, out here. I'm oh, sorry. Does that crusher actually fit, or is that one of these these? Um... It does. <laughs> Just. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the thing is, if you'd have thrown the two crushes in and then put the slasher into the. Um... Uh, if we had any doubts about those Silver Breeze dying. <laughs> oh, no, it is a front charge. Uh, so. Yeah. Personally, I would, I would move the crusher right behind the long axe so that uh, this back sharpness unit has to worry about, about them a little bit more. He has that's the uh, need one, so he does have to range to potentially then threaten these palace guard way on the left, too. Yeah. I think barreling 20 inch down and then turning, looking at the flanks, not a bad option. Yeah, that, that's that would be my preferred option personally. It looks like he is going to make sure he still agrees with that. Uh, with that move, he would have sent practically guarantee that he has uh five unit strength over here on the right. Um, but right now there is 12 here on the left that look pretty uh, uncontested. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it's got a good chance of killing the silver breeze in one shot with a Morax, but it doesn't. It's not guaranteed. Um, I can't see the long axe charging the silver breeze doing anything you know, to kill them in the in two turns, and they're just going to be. Where are the um? The Pascal, are they going to be in the front of the long axe, are they? Um, Is it? I'm not guys, thinking of what one, those there. Yeah, they're going to be in the front of those long axe there. Yeah. Yeah. So if they're going to get in, 
even then, I think the crudges and slashes on the right-hand side are going to be in range, aren't they? Um, well, he's finally engaging the long X over here. <laughs> you know, um, it's been going on for a while, chicken over mouth. Yeah. Which I think is the, the correct turn to do it in. Because um, now you... you he, He's probably uh, reasonably sure that these more X are going to kill. And with positioning, you can make it so that only one of these hordes can fit in. Okay. But I don't think the long acts are in inspiring or within the range of the drum either, are they? Is that okay? No, they're just kind of floating. No, if uh, if he does his combats correct in the right order, though, he can back these drums up to get him in range. He would have to do this silver breeze first, um, and then the uh, battle cats. Yep. All right, uh, he did decide to put both crushers into the uh, into the silver breeze. Um, he does do was it, five wounds to him, uh, so that goes a long way to uh, killing him pretty quickly. Did uh, hit six times, didn't he? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, six out of six. And then the uh, long axe hit seven times, so you're probably looking at another five wounds, and then you only need a six once. Yeah. Yeah. So knowing now that it was turn three when he threw all his silver breeze in, is the thinking is could could it be that he was thinking I got these crudgers in my face, I'm gonna get I'm gonna lose my ability to shoot anyway. I might as well mm -hmm. go in and try to get something useful out of them. Because it seems like I mean the name of the the name of Keith List is F it, let's try elves again, and maybe it got to turn three and he said F it, let's put him in. Like it's you yeah. know what I mean? Ooh, only one wound. I think, I think he oh my! Uh, that kind of makes up for the five wounds that Crushers did. Uh, more than enough. And a 12 will not be wavering. <laughs> that seems a bit rude. Jeez. Oh. Wow. Yeah, so this Silver Breeze will hold, a, hold him up at least one more turn. Um, Right, we have the two slashers. Uh, they didn't roll too well either. Uh, only doing eight wounds out of 20 attacks on threes and twos. Uh, they do end up to waver, which is... Did I... Uh... No, eight, plus, uh, eight plus six is 14, so that should have been a waver. Yeah, that's a waver. What's going on around here? <laughs> You'll make it up as you go along. Yeah. Uh, right? I mean, to be fair, the, the battle cats into the one thing. Now you couldn't do that. I guess that averages out. <laughs> do they have brutal? Lost track now. They no, do not really have brutal. Not. Even then, a brutal when it uh, when it kill them, that would still be a waiver within a fifteen. What are we doing? Oh, wait, wait. Oh, oh. Did did they realize it? Nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> 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 there you go. Yeah. I am just double checking the list as well now, just to be 100% sure that we're not wrong, because that looked even stupid that one. I uh, don't think it's the reason 12 40. I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, no, they're, they're 14, definitely 14-16. Uh, that is a, that's a pretty big swing there. Uh, yeah. And forgetting about that. <laughs> He maybe, should have killed them. So right, I think maybe that's, that's what should have happened, happened, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that that is what should have happened, and maybe uh, maybe he felt bad for that. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, splat. But he's done it in the wrong order, as as you would say. No, yeah, he should have done these uh, silver breeze first. That way, he could back up the uh, war drum. Could also possibly sidestep the um, uh, crusher, though the crusher wouldn't have gotten range, would he? Ooh, Seventeen damage. If, he, if the hey! crusher would have done that. <laughs> Seventeen <laughs> damage of the silver breeze. Uh, Double <laughs> one. Uh, they they are devastated for what that's worth, but <laughs> we're not Gosh. going anywhere. You know. I mean, I guess that kind of makes up for forgetting <laughs> that the silver breeze are fourteen or fourteen sixteen on the right. <laughs> That's what happened. I'm going to double one you in a minute, so I'm going to just take these guys off. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Does he have both the... Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you do as well at this point. Don't give up like that, come on. Don't give up. Uh, you know... They'll remember at the end of the turn and we'll have to do it all over again. <laughs> right? Uh, I love it. 17 hits and 13 wounds. Uh, that's not oh. enough for a kill, most likely. Uh, but that is enough to it's got the, uh, uh, definitely it's smart. No, no. No, okay. Mm. Mm. Boy. I was just going to hope that, that long X defense five is going to keep him in the in the game, but I just what was that twenty five hitting on threes and twenty five uh, hitting on yeah. Oh no, you could probably engineer. Well, you got vein chant. You might want to use the vein chant stuff, but you could engineer it on him to charge from the uh, you know the hell as well. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. Honestly, even if he if he multi charges, that's probably uh, unhindered. Yeah. Now uh, the uh, central unit will. Pull across far enough. To, oh, I guess you can back the silver breeze up if you don't want to fight the long axe and force it. But uh, he also has this ASB who can stand just yeah. to the right of him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for some reason, I was slow to go to the left hand side with him. I thought I was. Mm -hmm. was stupid. Okay, now the palace guard on the hill. To me, it looks like they're kind of off the hill, personally. But I'm guessing they've just I think they're off the hill. Yeah, that. Yeah. You don't get thunderous anyway now, so. You know. Oh, yeah, Phalanx doesn't matter. <laughs> Maybe that's Art is like... on 14 of a 60 page PowerPoint. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, concentrating really hard because he's watching this at the same time. Right. What is he doing? What is this? Yeah, hey, what's happening here? No, no. I guess he could run the silver breeze away and then send the parts garden. What? Um, does he have a flank? No. Nope. I don't think so. No, there's no real nimble shenanigans he can do. He might be checking to see what his options are with a withdrawal. Yeah, we have to charge the um. Crush or, or he is looking, he is looking to try to use his silver breeze to block uh, the charge. Which I feel like you might as just use the arm standard there. He's yeah. right. He's whipping rage. He, he'll still be able to cast, and he'll do some damage to the long axe in return. I mean, the silver breeze could get out of the way, couldn't they? I'm attempting to send him after the uh, crush charge with the bell's uh, silver breeze. Yeah, the silver on the yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, he could. He could charge over there. Um, and that'll save unit strength. Uh, and they're fast enough to be able to get back over later. Um, he could also go to the bottom left and disengage if he wanted to, but he'd have to move the palace guard first. But yeah, if he nimbles away and charges uh, this crusher, that does open up. This palace guard is sharp, Mr. Charm. Does he, he lose he nimble though from the. Oh, he, he does lose nimble from the phalanx. That's yeah, it was the phalanx. You're right. Yep. So he's better off kind of just staying in the on the counter charge just to allow enough space for the palace guard to get in. Yeah. Yeah, because um, he definitely would be able to fit both of those units in with the counter charge since there's a, a gap here at the top. Because otherwise, there's no. No, I suppose he could sidestep slightly, couldn't he? And then, and then he would be. He wouldn't have to charge back in. But what's the point? <laughs> you might as well go back in. Yeah, it's a lot of fiddling around. Uh, the only point for that would be to save the silver breeze from being charged by the long axe later. Uh, so he is doing the army standard bear to do a little uh, charge redirecting. Um, so now yeah. these guys are not hindered. Good move. Uh, Does that mean that those silver breeze will finish there and that those palace guard aren't going to be getting in? It looks like you just disengage without charging, which uh, you, know, you might as well charge personally since you do have shooting at every point of damage. Just 
means it's more likely for them to die. Why? Why? Why do that? And, and you're not. I don't get it. I don't get it. Stop it! <laughs> Go fight it, dumb it. You're right. Stop it. It's on your side of the board. It's three units, champ. It's the only way you're going to kill it. Just go, go, go beat the spearman up, all right? Do it. Got sharpness. What's the four? Oh, yeah, they're the sharpness ones as well. Oh, my God. Yeah, right? <laughs> I... Well, have we got this brew again? Ah, oh, they don't need it. Should have really had the wine of elven kind. <laughs> 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 So Brinley uh, asked, uh, is, uh, is Keith playing 2.5 Ed Elves where Battle Cats have Pathfinder and Silver Breeze are 12 14? <laughs> Probably is. Right? No, he's undoing Some things are hard to forget. Right now. Oh, oh. No, he's rethinking things. He's put it all back again. So that, that's the correct move against the Long Axe. He should keep that. Yeah. Sure. You want the BSB in the middle yeah. of the scrum anyway. So, I mean, the thing about protecting the sharpness, guys, is this the Fury Palace Guard, they no. can die for pressure step. Um, if he does charge over here, he is looking at more at, at uh, two uh, slashers to charge him. So maybe he's thinking, you know, I'd rather protect the four unit strength. I think I think gotta be. then I'd rather go into the the long axe with the uh, your shot so I'll kill them. Take both dragons back because you're probably not going to die. or probably not going to get wavered. And then pick up a dragon on the return. Mm -hmm. you, and you, you and you would still have, you would save your silver breeze too. Then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You now the four units for four they've created two drops for your one drop. Because the only way that the slashers are positioned at the moment that. You can only use one to charge one unit because you can't declare a charge with both of them because yeah. the other one can't see. Yeah, true. So at yeah, the moment, multi charge. Um, so at the moment, he's only really worried about one slasher hitting him, yeah. isn't he? At this point in time, yeah. Uh, and in which case, he picks up the, the long axe, which is three unit strength, and on a return charge, he, he would pick up a slasher, which is four. So he would trade, it would be an even trade. Um, and chances are an even trade with him still living, yeah. Yeah, because if you put Bane Chant on them, they're melee to elite, crush two, and that's probably going to mince the dragon, actually. He's running this mage out over here, which is good. Um, it means that... Put my crusher uh, away. Let's see. Yeah, it would, it would bring the crusher away. It's, uh, it looks like he got out of range here, actually. And then... That is a movement nine pick horse pick against the movement eight pig, isn't got it? got two more speed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we must be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I agree, John. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things, though. It's easy, isn't it? Us like sitting here, bouncing ideas off each other and right. you know, making some conclusions. And not having the pressure of somebody looking over our shoulder. <laughs> I, this is my first time doing this, and I feel like it's just evolved into me going, I don't know what's going on. But, <laughs> yeah. but usually that's because people are like playing above, and this time I'm like, I don't, I don't, right? So if this, if I go back and I re listen to myself and I sound like I'm being critical, mm -hmm. trust me, I'm not. I just, I just, I'm just always assuming people know something that I don't. Yeah. The last right. commentary I had was a, a similar kind of thing. You were just looking at it and going, What are you doing? Don't. Do that? Oh, that's just crazy! It ends up winning, and you know, like, yeah. Oh, okay, no, that's fine. You were perfectly fine, right? Don't listen to us. Uh, but I mean, if you're going to look at it, I mean, realistically, uh, I think are we thinking the elves are in the ascendancy at this point in time. The only only issue I can see is those two silver breeze units are going to disappear, or okay. three silver breeze units. Three are going to go away. I right. would like to call it because I don't know what they're going to do next. <laughs> Noted. They're going to spin now, round, reel their rears to the Morax, <laughs> and then go, oh, crap. Well, I know why he's done that with the Palace Guard hard at, at the rear, because he's playing the scenario, so he just wants to get that five-inch strength across. But I still yeah. think it would be a better choice mm -hmm. to take that the three-inch strength that's on your side. 
and then being in position to take out more units yeah. or push across the board later on. Because right even, now, even if you can pick up a war drum because you use a war drum as chaff, that's another unit strength. So you, you've tied on unit strength already. Like, it's the same result. Only you've killed two units. Heath has no shooting left. He's got a he's got a guy with a boomstick, right? And that's it. And so at this stage of the game, it's going to be hard for him to put any kind of pressure on. This is direct yeah. pressure, you know. Mm. And he's, he's got thirteen extended. lightning bolt left, but that's yeah. not going to be enough to pick up any un unwounded units. No. Yeah. But next turn, there's going to be a crowder in the slasher. Probably peering at the back of that palace guard unit anyway, so they're going to have to spin around, which is going to keep them out of being in the other side. So they're still going to be in the bottom half. I mean, um, the, the other option is to take your most killing unit and run it ten inches or twelve inches away from everybody. And okay, <laughs> right? Not fight with your melee two palace guard horde. Yeah, your three hundred mm -hmm. point palace guard horde, isn't it? Yeah. And and Felix does bring up the point which I brought up in the beginning. Uh, all the fighting is taking place on Matt's side of the table, which is interesting because Matt went first, right? And so mm. the idea was Matt should have been push, 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 push. So we, even if he loses a bunch of stuff, he's fighting on the other side of the table, and that tentative yeah. play the first two rounds, I think it's is now coming back to haunt him. Mm. You know, there's potentially with the. So I mean, it looks like fighting, um, with the silver is on the right fight, and if they do two or three more damage to the long axe, and then a, a turn five and six lightning bolt, another ten lightning bolt into him. You can pick the long axe regiment on the right, you know, realistically, because they're not going to be inspired. Uh, That's a good point. So this boomstick is only going to get one more lightning bolt left, though, because there's no way he can keep, yeah, keep shooting and dodge that many crushers. Depending on what Matt does, yeah, I think he'll use the two crushers to go after the silver breeze again, and he's the one in the middle, which I think he might send after the boomstick or send it to the center. So he might buy him two turns. So he's bolt. done one wound versus the uh, war drone. We're shooting. It looks like he's bane chanting the uh, the silver breeze, uh, the devastated silver breeze. Who did he shoot at the wardrobe? Um, he shot the uh, lightning bolt over here. Ah, but he's got bane chant on the um, on the um. Uh, no, uh, it, I thought bane chant on the BSB, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. It looks like he actually didn't cast it. He did remember Devastated, and he did uh, No Wounds. Oh, boy. I mean, they're alive, so... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Still getting in the way. This is going to be big as well, though. Let's see if he can um, take out these long acts. The uh, Elf Mages still have Heal Standard? No, no, uh, no spells. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it'd have been a nice choice just to heal them to, so they wouldn't devastate anymore. But. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, just to get all the mages are a la carte these days. Mm -hmm. A la carte. That's <laughs> yeah, so a fifteen wounds, uh, which is a great shot to kill, but he is uninspired. He needs a seven. Yep, there you go. I got a nine, and he's got it. Boom. Yeah, Wardrum would have not made a difference in that. So no. Okay. It's a good pickup. Yeah. Take everything back. Keeps a genius. Genius play. <laughs> so I mean, realistically, oh, teleported. At, <laughs> I mean, right now, uh, Keep does have the uh, the unit strength advantage, but you're probably looking at this all silver breeze dying next turn, uh, which is six unit strength, and then. It's not much that can get these got these palace guard horde, but right now at least. Mm. Um, but he could pick him up in turn uh, turn six potentially. So really, Matt is going to have to try to figure out how to beat eight unit strength of these two palace guard hordes because I don't see much that can kill him right now. Yep. Now, that being said, that that regiment of Morax. Is going to either be stuck fighting Palace Guard or stuck fighting Silver Breeze again. That other quarter Palace Guard is going to come over and have a word with it. And he can't run away with them. I mean, you can be cheeky and put the war drum into the side and try to do it that way. And then, but he's still boxed in. So that regiment of Morax is not going to take part in the battle, probably. No, and, yeah. Right? The, the Morax killed a Silver Breeze and then probably died pretty promptly. Yeah. Should just be um, the only way. 
the only way to keep that from happening is for the war drum to charge the, the flank of the solar breeze and after it dies overrun and depending yeah. on how far it overruns you might be able to maybe uh, get right really you need the war drum to overrun because you can't sidestep with the morax and keep those guys in the in the front yeah he has cleverly positioned it so that those more acts go anywhere to to the right side of the screen. Um, it will be a flank charge. Yep. And they can't pivot very much either. So that does keep uh, the blocking. Are the uh, which of the wing slashes are in range of the palace guard? Are any of the wing slashes in range of them? Or I, I'm assuming what he's done is position them so that they're in the flank and they can't fit because of the silver bridge cab anyway. But. Um, no, none of them are in range. That's what it looks like. I do. Where did he, are those seven, those seven weeks just did five damage to the long Oh, wow. Yeah, they did <laughs> five, <laughs> five damage. Um, see, the landing bottom off six. turn up is not so ridiculous anymore, is it? Yeah. <laughs> That's a waiver, isn't it? Uh, they, they wavered him, yeah. Take it all back! Take it all back! I never saw it coming. Genius play all around. Oh my god! So what? What was Phalanx for again? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he meant he only got eight hits rather than eleven. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it! The game we play. <laughs> well, it's still, I mean, still got the two. Still got the two crushers. You're not going to get an overrun with the axe, but. Yeah, with mm -hmm. the long axe, but are they within? Are they got with one move. Are they going to uh, be able to get into the other half? Yeah, a single move will be able to get majority over because um, oh, okay. they're pretty close already. All oh, right, so he's already got the ruler out, anyways, for the twenty-four. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I put it over there on the right, kind of off to the side. Yeah, so you don't have to then kind of measure it. <laughs> you putting it in the game, good. Why is he measuring that for? Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. So he's backing off the Morax. Is he going to try and see if he can spin and charge? I think he was seeing if he could do something uh, tricky. It looks like he's <laughs> going to uh, try to kill the ward. Um, yeah, I, I don't see how he... The, I think the only way he can not get charged is uh, if he overruns far enough into war drum. I think if you backed off an inch, turned 90 degrees, sent the wall drum and the um, ooze into the flank, then you could just walk five inches and maybe you'd be out, out of an inch, so you could just be down towards the centre where that yeah, uh, true. crunch is currently sat. Yeah, he can, he can disengage and just walk over here. If you um, turn to just walk into the uh, objective and you're safe from the palace guard. And in which case, he would have nine uh, unit strength between these three regiments, and that will allow his crudgers to go to stay on the top side of the board and deal with palace guard. Yeah. It's true. He only has to kill that one palace guard horde if that's the case. And then he could win with the three regiments, but. Yep. But I think is he, he going to be able to. One of them regiments, actually. I think he's going to lose the right side one to a lightning bolt. I think he's just going to the dice to roll that way and get two damage and roll six. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah. Think, especially damage. if he sends his uh, all his inspiring over to the left, which he kind of has to do for that plan. So the, the crushers aren't in range of the wizard, is what you were saying as well. Are they? Are they just that range? Even if they, they get that one inch draw, oh, oh, they don't have the withdrawal because they weren't engaged last time. Sorry. Yeah, because uh, the Silver Breeze countercharged the Long Axe, so the uh, Crush is technically engaged. Mm -mm -mm. Or fully endorsed. <laughs> I think like a couple of glasses of bourbon in the morning, eh? Getting near noon here now. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. Feel a little better. I know. I had a friend of mine. It's always four o'clock somewhere in the world, right? So <laughs> my argument I'm is always that four o'clock maybe still a bit early. It's me to drink. Therefore, I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like he's going to charge the a silver into this silver breeze with the long axe, which should should kill him. Um, and that pushes the long axe even further onto that side of the board. It does look like he's disengaging with the uh, more axe. Just backing up 
uh, doesn't really do him much good. Does it keep him out of range of the second palace guard horde? Where, where, what's the range on the leftmost palace guard horde? Where do they get yeah. to? Uh, they, they couldn't charge him anyway. Uh, oh, so I they're out of range anyway, yeah. yeah. They were. The wounded one were, were the only ones threatening him. I think uh, Tom's idea of marching to the right, which to be fair though, not many people think of. Because um, in, uh, in second edition, when you were engaged, uh, or you couldn't break the one inch rule, period. But now you can break it as long if you're disengaging as long as you end more than one inch. Right. Which allows for a lot more sneaky tactics like that. Yeah, 100%. He's not charging the uh, slasher, which is surprising to me. He's also got 12 inch rather than 11. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but it's put some speed up too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super fast dragons, I love them. He's painted it red. It goes I fast. <laughs> painted it red, so he always gets an extra inch. Yeah, that's it. And the blue ones I are mean, lucky. I'd rather have the blue ones. Yeah, <laughs> I always love that. So you just paint them, and they get a special rule. Oh, great! <laughs> what happens if I have pink orcs? Uh, you don't want to ask. <laughs> Minus one to your nerve checks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. What are pink arts getting out of that? <laughs> oh dear. Oh. I don't know. He's, he's disengaged one of the crushers to maneuver him into position to obviously attack that wizard, but it'll be a turn too late anyway. He might as well try and kill because if he fails to kill the silver priest now, and he's oh, stuck right. there again. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, again, it's one of those things. It's easy for us to work out. It's hard when yeah. you're in the game. Yeah, especially since we can talk to each other and mm. bounce ideas off of each other. I guess he wanted this crusher to threaten palace guard over here on the left. Uh, he might be looking idea. for that crusher to do two more damage to the silver breeze, waver them, and then protect them from the lightning bolt, like the long axe from the lightning bolt, maybe. Uh, that's a next level play. That one. Um. That's uh, all you do. Is Mage has enough speed it. that he can, he can get an angle. Yeah, I don't know, um, but it would at least be covered up. And then the turn after that, hopefully not being wavered, you can finish them off. Walk over the line on your turn six. Although that plan does need a turn seven, doesn't it? Because you'd need to yeah. kill them. And, yeah. But if you, if you notice in the comments, uh, <laughs> I got two good ones. First up, Felix. There are no rules anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we play how we like to play. Uh, I, think, I think this is in response to Bart's question. What's the general consensus on drinking in the middle of the day during a conference call? Is this generally frowned upon? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't just, think, just frowned. I think that's fair. Yeah. Technically fine if they can't see you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. If they think it's coffee. Yeah, 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 it's coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so... All right, so he's done one wound. Uh, seven plus six is 13. Uh, that depends on if they remember that. Uh, <laughs> so he's 12, 14, 16, yeah. or 12, 14. Here comes the waiver token. Oh, oh please. No. There's the place of the breeze house at the moment. <laughs> oh, dear. There we go. I think they've gone back. Right, so they, they remember their 1416 and Silver Breeze are fine. Over which, here, he's done 13 damage on two to 17 damage uh, uh, unit. No kill. Quite like overkill. Right. <laughs> hey. So what's interesting is by backing this up, it means that the War Drum cannot block for the Morax. Uh, which if he, if he had charged just the war drum in, then the war drum could have, with a lucky dice roll, kept the uh, palace guard from charging the at all. Um, That's a lot of luck, yeah. though. Yeah, it's a lot of luck, but right now he has no chance of not getting charged by pretty much. Unless he sacrifices the, the card drum from Slasher. Oh, yeah, I guess you could do that. But for why? 
He's got a regiment yeah. way buried up in his, uh, his own deployment zone at this point. Yeah. Well, wow. I mean, I'm being a little hyperbolic. He could get across. It's not that big a deal, but oof. Seven damage, not bad. Uh, and that will kill. Yep. See, by the looks of it, 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 from this point of view, what are we saying? That he's actually done on uh, the Palace Guard Horde just needs to, the sharpness one could just run into the other side of the table. Yep. So that's yeah, four straight there. away. He's guaranteed for the these on guys the, can stay over there. The one on 13 damage, sleep. are they in range of the Morax? They are. All oh, right, so that's what so you do. Send them in, don't you? Bane Channel. They should be out of rally range and just hope for the yeah. day. Yeah. They're out of rally range as well. Oh, I think they are. In we go. Main trains coming. They are, they are in rally range. Oh, Ooh, they are. Yeah. All right, just roll good. It's fine. <laughs> that's it. Just roll good. And um, they are hindered. It's, it's edgy. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at like 12 and a bit damage. 12 damage. Either 17, that's right. 5 twice. Well, that's if they're Bane chanted, right? Though? They have to be Bane chanted first. Yeah, yeah. That you don't throw a broomstick at the drum as well. But I think he's protected. If you notice, I think he's protected both of those palace guard hordes because they're nothing can see them. Yep. So he has got a guaranteed unit strength eight going into turn six, is not he? Yeah. Um, You've got a boomstick the drum as well, which you've got to do it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That makes a huge unit, difference. Yeah. It's a unit strength and it's two extra nerve on the Marax. Yep. Ah. And you're not really going to kill the long axe anyway. After this, who cares about the boomstick? That's all it needs to do. Yeah. And don't worry, the, the silver bees, the way they're going, they're going to kill those long axe. Easy, aren't they? I might bring, <laughs> I'd probably bring the bottom right um, mage down to do the same thing as well. Yeah, so that's the boomstick. So you use him to uh, yeah. shoot the long the uh, war drone. And then yeah. this guy over here, I guess, shoots either backs up shooting the war drum or takes a pot shot at the crudger or the long axe. I would I would back up the uh, the loot because if if the loot fails, then you'll want to have a backup of the wizard being able to. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Six, just in case. If the bane champ fails, bane champ the palace guard. If not, uh, put your extra lightning bolt into the war drum and make sure that's dead. Right. Hey, Bane Chan. It looks like uh, what's he going to do? He's now chart shooting this <laughs> wizard at, at the ward. He's, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's got two hits. Uh, and uh, one wound. Uh, That's uh, not a great chance for a kill. Nope. He's got the boost That's... stick. Go on, boost stick. You can do it. Mike, you're getting a shout out in the comments. Just so you know I see. as well. Hi, Steve. I think somebody may be on the, the bourbon as well, I think. <laughs> Another All four caps. wounds. Brings it just guys. Um, yeah, it's good target allocation, is that? So who did the boomstick go for? Drum. Still on the drum. No, war drum. Tried up the yeah. nine wounds, which uh, took it to snake eyes and guaranteed a kill pretty much. Yeah. Here come the dangerous, dangerous silver breeze. Yeah, well, so oh, far they have been. We got one. It's only a what? That's so, only a so seven. Far, Matt, he has as much uh, unit strength scoring as Matt has total left. Uh, guys. Oh, man. They're dead. <laughs> <laughs> what? There you go. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silver breeze for the win. I mean,. When we call like that, cavalry against heavy <laughs> See, it's no, you like. guys. It's I, did not, I did not see that. I really thought that was the ultimate F this game move when he threw it all forward, but apparently it worked. Once again, I don't no, know what I'm talking at about. The, the turn he did it. Yeah. 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 Right? 
So Ooh, even if, just... uh, if Matt gets every one of his units across the board, he's only going to be able to tie uh, those two palace card board. I mean, what you're asking is whether he can get the uh, Morax across the board. That that's not happening, is it? No. No. Need no, a five thousand no. uh, Morax. Yep, gone. Um, he only did nine wounds, but doesn't matter. We have an eight and a nine for nerve. Oh, oh man, that is golden. Oh. Yeah, that's That's a six unit strength map just lost. Yeah. So at the beginning of the cast, we joked, "Wouldn't it be funny if the Silver Breeze killed something?" <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, admittedly, <laughs> all look at that, that right three silver right, buildings are dead. Right right? But, oh, wait, you've won the right flank. <laughs> right? But it was like a front charge, too. We were telling, well, I got a rear charge once, and then, ah, stop it. Front charge. Come out and box but, me. It's, it's, a, right? it's a good learning point here is that you've got these crudges on slashes have had one combat so far against the Silver Breeze cab. Uh, yeah. Two, I suppose, if you've got flank charge onto the Silver Breeze. Uh, Right, they're not they're not mm -hmm. making their points back, are they? They may so, kill this palace guard board now. They they weren't even getting their points back and just like board control threatening. No, because uh, he kept them behind his lines pretty much the entire time. And it's funny we talked about uh, around turn three, which I don't know what turn we were on at the real turn we were on, but about land them up in the front really forced the issue. He could have moved up and had all the silver priests within 20 inches of him and not been so aggressive and still made him move and still made him run. Right? Yeah. So, you know, I think, as you had mentioned, it's, Matt's not used to running this running this army. He is going to look back at this game and go, yeah, I probably misused these a little bit. Maybe I should do this and that. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's, I think Felix uh, pointed out that he, he might have been a little gun shy after he lost some more X troops early. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a question about what bourbon am I drinking right now? I'm drinking Eagle Rare. <laughs> or nice oh, Dwarven Tears. Moved on from the from the uh, Elijah Craig. Yes, I've moved on. I have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> I heard Eagle Rare is good. It's I I it's love that bourbon? story. Yeah, the same the same ones make Blanton's, and Blanton's is delicious. And they also mm -hmm. make a um, one called Buffalo Trace, which is great for the price point. Oh. Yeah, Buffalo Trace is a solid, uh, solid bourbon. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's easy to drink and it's a little sweet, but whatever, you know. Yeah. Oh, this is. A, I was thinking about a turn seven charge with the long axe, it, taking out a palace guard for it. <laughs> Maybe with some support, but yeah. hey, he's seen the silver breeze just run into phalanx and do stuff, and we can't even do that with the long axe. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, there should be imbalances. Uh, they may have slasher support, but we, you know, we'll see. Okay, so so you're Matt, and you're gonna hope to pick up, let's say, some cheeky stuff. You're hoping to pick up the one horde of palace guard. Even with a turn seven, he can't. He can't do anything, right? He doesn't have enough no, the, packs to like pick up either of the other horse, and he doesn't have enough unit strength to compete. Yeah, he doesn't have enough unit strength to compete. His really his only option is to send both of the slashers over to kill one of the palace guard horde. But in which case, there's still a unit strength for palace guard horde against a unit strength to long axe regiment. Mm -hmm. What what possibly work is a. Um, my thought process on this, if he could put both of the slashes into a position to get a flank on one of the, because the only way it's going to work is he has to get a flank on one of the palace guard. And mm -hmm. the only way that's going to happen is one slashes may uh, slightly further up from where the palace guard hold are now. And then the other ones on the opposite flank. And then whichever one doesn't get the flank fly back into your heart. Right. But yeah. That's the only thing. So he's got. He does look like uh, he used his army standard bear essentially as a way to get into the forest. He's charged it. Um, and otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to get the position. Because unfortunately, the way he was positioned, yeah, no, he'd have gone. Oh, yeah, he would be facing a little bit more. Uh, right, he should rotate more counterclockwise. But we know this game is the game where you just do what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's fine. Nice. <laughs> 
I know. But, you know, we all do it though, don't we? You know, pressure mm-hmm. under the camera, all that kind of thing. So, one of the things that I try to do when when I play is I try to, all things being equal, you try to remove the other guy's inspiring, right? And so, in this instance, I like this, insofar as I Matt's Matt's in an awful position right now. But if he removes the the inspiring, then he has the chance for that. You know, for the Hail Mary later on to do just yep. enough at the double six, right? But with the BSP there, it's almost impossible, right? So once again, so you're mm-hmm. saying there's a chance. I mean, when there's when there's infinitesimal points or infinitesimal chance, you really got to – it's almost He's like it makes you – He's and has failed to waver to Silver Breeze over on the right. So Get all back. <laughs> yeah, oh, so my God. Just run away. 20 inches, got cut. Yeah, away. done. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with him being gauge, he has a 21 inch move to run away, so he can he can bugger off over to the left here, and yep. go towards the center. That is just rude. go over the hill. That's all you got to do. Just go over the hill. I'm far away. <laughs> <laughs> Those silver breeds are, are yeah. I don't know what they've been on, <laughs> but they've they've done work. They've done work. Yep. Yeah. I mean, at this point, it doesn't really matter. I'd almost be tempted just to charge a crusher back and <laughs> two fingers up. Go on, then. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. We've, done, we've done the guys with spears. We can do you on a pig. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I did to all your friends. You're next. <laughs> yeah. right. He only did, uh, five, it looks like, four wounds. With he's, the, done, uh, he's put him on 23 there, and that's uh, a waiver, and they've got fewer. Oh, wait, no, he's not. Uh, I 12, 16, 15, 17, plus nine. They're not bad. All right, so they had 13 before. He did four with the uh, the slasher. 17. And then a double two. 21. I'm honestly confused about all these dice rolls on the left. Uh, I don't see where the crudger attacked. I don't see where the slasher. The slasher wounded only four times, and then he rolled. Two dice after yeah. that. And you, and you attack the BSB first every time, every day, twice on Sundays, right? I mean, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. Well, this isn't a BSB. This is a crudger. He has five attacks to crush, too. Yeah, no, that's no, I mean, the, the BSB against no, I mean, the Elven BSB. You kill that first. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. yeah. All right, apparently, it's all right. Apparently, in Palace Guard, just have goblin nerves. So. <laughs> New. And it's happened a couple of times, and it's always been, it's always not been in Keith's favor. <laughs> right? He just picks units up, just whatever. I, unless, are we all wrong? I feel like we might all be wrong. I mean, this has happened multiple times. Very easily. Has he killed the BSB? Uh, he did four wounds and rolled seven, which is not enough. Nah. Now yeah, he's over attacking the uh, the mage of the boomstick. Yeah, he's done one wound and rolled a ten, so that should be enough to kill. Are you just going back over trying to work out the rolls that they have? Yeah. Uh, no, he, he, only, he only did five wounds with the uh, slasher against the palace guard horde, and then he didn't really roll the crudger on foot. You know, he did. The crudger got two and the slasher got three. Oh, that's confusing. <laughs> don't understand what's going on. Yeah, I don't, he's yeah. constructing a crime team. <laughs> no, 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 he did do it, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's dead anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. So he might have started rolling like, and then they said, just give me double ones. Maybe? I, think, I think it is. Cause I think they're on 13 damage to begin with. Mm-hmm. He did two with his uh, guy on foot and then he's done seven... Well, no, he got yeah five hits followed by four damage, so that's putting him on. Oh, Matt used his skull pull. Yeah, no, they are. So uh, I think what's happened is he actually rolled. Oh, if you go back to those rolls, he rolled ten dice. He hit seven times, rolled five to damage, but then realised he hit seven, so he rolled another two. So that he got he got. Um, oh, okay, that's that's. Right. Yeah, yeah. So he got he got six damage in total from that, and then he rolled three because he thought that's a crusher, not a crudger. So he's actually rolled yeah. three attacks for the the crudger rather than five and got one wound from him. So that was eight. So that's right. going on top 21, 25. So he did do it. 
in a very okay. weird way. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Fair enough. That that makes sense then. We got there. Yes. Oops. Right. So, what have we missed then up until this point? Oh, is this just the silver breeze running away? Go, Silver Breeze, go! <laughs> so, yeah. So at this point, if you're mad, it doesn't look like you're going to win, so do you just try to kill as much stuff to get attrition points then? Yeah, as long as he gets that Silver Breeze out of the way. Um, even then, even if he kills that Palace Guard Horde with one Slasher or both of them, it's not going to make a difference, is it? Um, it's just going to come down to... Yeah, you'll get yeah. a point for each uh, strong unit in the opponent's ass, so you might as well just put both them dragons out, I think. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. it does give you a scenario. And then the... Uh, and a palace card could just move... Uh, I'll say just turn the... Uh, and their butts to their crudgers and move forward and say, hey, do you want to charge me? You're giving up two bonus points from that one. No, I think you'd always just turn them, just turn both of those palace, guards out, palace guard hordes to face. Because then if he does take yeah. a charge and doesn't kill it and got a turn seven, then you've got a chance to kill both of them, if need be. Um, I mean, uh, it's probably worth more to get the two crudgers into the other half than it is killing the palace guard horde, because... What's that going to be in, in terms of attrition? One more point? Or is it going to be two for the two slashes? Yeah. I mean, oh. you could charge one palace guard or one card into each one roll. Now, even if you roll 10 attacks uh, and 10 wounds, you won't be able to kill them. <laughs> Depends what nerd they think they are, right? Ha! That is very true. Well, we, we have a comment in the chat that says uh, Brutal killed the the palace guard horde, but I don't know what yeah. has brutal over there. The skull part. Yeah, the the, the, skull the, skull. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the uh, forgetting the two hits is what really threw me off on that. So I, I wasn't able to keep track of the uh, Got it. of what was rolling where. All good. It, it didn't help that I think he rolled only three when he should have rolled five for his crudger. But hey, you know it's yeah. That's where that's where I missed the first two damage, and then I'm, obviously the third. I ended up to twenty three, and then I was like, "Sorry, oh, I didn't even do that." Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I could be completely wrong anyway, so it doesn't matter, right? The important thing is they're dead. <laughs> they're dead, Jim. <laughs> yes. Is that is that a flank from the Codron Slasher? Oh, what the hell is charging? Is he? What? What? Can he charge? Oh, I, I didn't know he could see that. Around the yeah, wood? It was an arc. Yeah, as long as he could have the viewpoint. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was an arc. Um, Sweet. He's charging the uh, the crudger to overrun into the slasher. Oh, boy. Oh, next level. <laughs> or was he, but was he in the flank of the crudger? If he was in the flank of the crudger... Can you be in the flank of a of an individual? You can't be. There's no such thing. You have to be able to the corner. There is. But if these guys are flush, he is technically hitting the corner. It's one of those things where then the crudger would turn to complete. Mm. It's the smitest little mm. Yeah. Mm. But but at the same time the crudger's <laughs> flush, which is uh there there was a ruling back in second edition where if you're flush you can't hit a corner like that. You have to declare, I think, in the in this a rule set that you're actually touching the unit. Because um, otherwise, there's an infinitesimal, like tiny little corner, isn't there, that you could have uh, run into. In in the big scheme of things, when you're playing on a tabletop, does it matter that much? What do you mean? I mean, just in terms of like when you when you t let's you take a look at this and you can say, okay, I want to touch your corner. Mm -hmm. You could spend two hours arguing about that, or you just go, sure, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, probably yeah. should have had him back. You know, I mean, that's usually how it ends up with me. I don't know, but uh, and let's be honest, it, it, you know, it, as we discussed, it could have gone one uh, either way. He could have been able to just be able to hit the corner. He might not have been able to. 
But as long as they agree to it, that's an important thing. We did, we did not check that. Uh, looks like he came up with 18 hits after the uh, elite conversion and, and nine wounds and well, enough to kill. He's overrun, which is uh, enough to take him in. Now, even though he was technically in a flank leader point wise, overruns follow the same rules for surge, so he does yep. just uh -huh. help. Uh, do they? They do. Yep, that I know. Because there's something with Bala which is separate. Surge have the section for overruns is not not sorry with the surge charge. Um, that's got a separate thing on the surge bit itself. It says that. It doesn't say that on normal charges, so you take the normal. Actually, you know, I am thinking of the FAQ from the second edition. I don't know if they kept that. It's not uh, as well as the third edition, so you, because I've had a yeah. forum where I've had that conversation, and a mate of mine said, oh, yeah, it'll never actually happen in game, we have to have both things at the same time happen. <laughs> the next game, also, I went, look, it's happening right now. <laughs> right. So in that instance, it would be a flank, so you, you hit, and then when you overrun, you recalculate where you would be? Yes, that's yeah. the um, argument. Wow. Wow. I'm just checking what it is she said. That's, that's if they, if they if had had looked closely enough to the FAQ to see if they had kept that over. Sure. If I played an army that actually charged anything, I'd, I, I would know that. That's good. <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> uh, All right, there is a first seven. Oh. So, did we miss how much damage that crush uh, that crusher took? Uh, looks like it took seven damage. Yep. Wow. Well, I like it's playing scenarios, going for kills. I like it. Well, yeah, at this stage of the game, right? Get your attrition. Northern Kings are, uh, rewards that, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, if you're playing Blackjack, you'd be run away and happens uh yeah get stuck in welcome dice to the airport um uh, actually in this scenario in blackjack you wouldn't get the uh bonus points for these slashers going over mm. really right um so in blackjack it would be probably more advantageous to try to get the uh attrition points yeah yeah again you could it can well it's got the option on it to go for the kill or go for uh yeah, gonna go for the kill. Tricky. Yeah. All right. I mean, you're trading four unit strength for two, and in exchange, if he kills them, he ends up bagging another 300 something points. 300 points is pretty good, mm -hmm. right? You're not certain to killing them. I think I'd leave it and just take the uh, tournament point for the objective. It's worth the tournament point for the objective is worth 300 odd kill points anyway. You roughly what the palace guards. But you just get guaranteed rather than yeah. chance. Right, 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 right. It's in your pocket automatically. Yeah, but, true. But let's point out that that's not the orc way. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, apparently, apparently, uh, being a spear orc and losing the cavalry is the orc way. So, <laughs> so we, we've all seen the uh, the charge of orc here against the orc cavalry. Uh, <laughs> you know, they were like that, and they uh, they did pretty well. Yeah. yeah. How'd you go? Yeah. I really nothing else really matters except for this because nothing can hit anything uh, unless he clubs uh, this roll, in which case he, uh, he would have the lightning bolt. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's potential there. Uh, oh, no, there isn't that much. I was going to say the potential for a, a draw, maybe, to pick up the silver breeze, but you can't do that. Yeah, that is right. He, no, he, he doesn't have any shooting and nothing's on the side. And that's the problem, right? He doesn't have any way to reach out and touch. Yep. Yeah. You do bring up a point, I mean, about the Orc way, right? Like Matt is in my, he's in my region. He's a lovely guy um, to play. He's been playing Orc since I met him until a couple of years ago, right? Um, but I don't know if he's one of those dudes who's like, Orcs do this, so I'm doing it. You know, he's he's a very mm -hmm. intelligent player on top of everything else. He doesn't, doesn't, right? I got some other guys yeah. in my region that are like, Goblins do this. It is what goblins do, right? Whether it makes sense or not. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So if they want to play that way, that's and it, it's fun. It's yeah, and I love it. Right? Yeah. With it's the uh, time, role yeah. playing as the uh, goblin general. Yeah. Yeah. It's sometimes it's been the thing about anyway, yeah. where you're just like, yeah, I could do this, but I want to roll some dice. Is the undead way right? just winning? Then is that the undead? <laughs> yeah. What's that, Tom? Yeah. yeah. Say it again. So in, is the undead? Undead? Yeah, I can't get the words anymore. Is the undead way just winning then? Oh yeah. You can tell it's written the into the plot. Way. Exactly. <laughs> the undead way is we get every single thing we need. Thank you very much. Yeah, you have all the tools and they're cheap. Done. Thank you. Sweet. Oh, he's doing it. He's taking the point. Ah! Brother. Not the orc way, though. No, it's not the orc way. <laughs> Tactical genius. There we go. Mm. Maybe. Although, let's be honest, he hasn't been very awkward right from the start of the game anyway, has he? It's not like the, the crutches and slashes have been going, yeah, oh, they've been more like going, ooh, ah. <laughs> Continue to back up, boys. Okay. I don't know. Just edging the units forward slowly, watching them all die. <laughs> Although, in, in their defense, right, that, you know, every, even their long axe, like, guys letting them down, so... Right. Hmm. So he did do a wound against the uh, over here. It looks like he. Uh, no, yeah, he only did eight wounds, so those guys will live. And people can unless no, against... no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, going back to whether it should be a flank or not, I was just quickly reading the rule book, and what it says is if they make contact, treat it as a, as a normal charge, and just pick mm -hmm. up on a line as you would do normally. So it Boom. becomes a flank charge at that point. Yep. It would, would have been yeah. a flank charge. Happens yeah. with surges on the surge. Which is a, a change from second edition. Yeah. At least in the FAQ, they they had it where if you overran, you tried to be treated the same as a surge, where you align yeah. to whatever flank you hit. Yeah. I remember me and Nick having a conversation that Nick was trying to get out of turn charges uh, a separate rule. So you get your surge, you get your, your random overruns and this kind of stuff, but all them the same way, so it's consistency. Rather than now where mm -hmm. it can be like, like there, that'd been a real gotcha moment where again, you haven't known about that rule. That's why mm -hmm. I've never got caught by the same mm -hmm. like, Oh no, you couldn't do that anyway. Right. But it, it, yeah. it, it, it does make, I mean, right, it should make sense. And, make sense. Uh, except the slasher. Oh, boom. Uh, and that looks like game. Yeah. So Oof. right now we have, what is it, 10 unit strength to four? Yeah. 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 Uh, kills wise as well. What does it look like? About. A lot to a little. Well, a lot to not as much. 800 plus the two wizards. So 1100 possibly. And the bane, and the battle standard. So somewhere around about 1200 for the elves. And then oh, not much on the orcs, is there? Because those crushes are only 75 each, aren't they? So Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's 225 total. The long axe is like 140 ish. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, slasher is 300. So you're looking at about 800 left. Yeah. So, I mean, what were you thinking? What, what, how do you think it could have been different? Right, let's see. That oh, Matt so could have been a little bit more aggressive. With I think he works here. would be a lot more aggressive mm -hmm. earlier. Especially yeah. on the one side. The right, on the, the right hand side, rush them down, kill everything in your path, and then turn. Right? Hmm. Especially if you're going to Maybe deploy that way. Right, he had most of his units straight yes. on the right, and he just kind of sat there, you know. Yeah. Uh, because it looked like that was so obvious the plan as well, didn't it? So yeah. We have... Howdy. Here comes Keith. Howdy, and uh, Matt should be joining us shortly. Just wiping away the tears, isn't he, at the moment? <laughs> I agree. He could not <laughs> kill Silver Breeze to save his life. <laughs> <laughs> We noticed the light tab yeah. against uh, the phalanx units. Uh, we were questioning Winning that earlier, especially since we <laughs> got the uh, 
got we, we got the turn wrong because um, we were thinking, well, if you did that in turn four, then you keep them from crossing the board. But it was like, oh, turn three, we don't know enough. And then they ended up grinding it out and winning. I was kind of hoping we need to take it across the board. Now. I was saying that's that's another mm -hmm. three unit strength, right? So he'd still, I mean, he'd have eight to my, mm -hmm. I guess to my eight, but I don't know. Might not have been the best sure. idea. I would I would have had twelve because he had you know yeah he had, I would have had twelve because he would have had to keep something over to kill the fury mm -hmm. palace guard. Right. So it would have been like six to eight, to, to eight. That was my theory at least. Um, yeah, keep just uh, some of your your thoughts uh, uh, about the game. Uh, what do you think went right with you? What went wrong? Um, anybody on the chat? Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to. If you want questions, go ahead and type them now. We'll ask them after we get uh, first impressions. Uh, go ahead, Keith. Yeah, so shooting worked great first two turns. Killed, I think the first three turns, I killed two troops and a, and a regiment, which was huge. You know, that's turn that flips the unit trends to my advantage. Uh, slows down a lot of his, you know, heavy attack, hitting on threes uh, units. So that, that was very beneficial. Um, then obviously Matt not being able to kill Silver Breeze. Uh, oh, and then Matt and I talked towards the end of the game, but wavering that, that Crudger on the right, slowing that down was also huge. Yeah, right um, in the beginning? Yeah, right in the first turn. Yeah. Just, um, stopping him there. So, uh, him down. <clears throat> the two slashers against the Silver Breeze, I, I don't know if you noticed, but you have, he actually only rolled a 14 and you still removed it. Mm. Uh, well, I think, uh, did you know that the Karma was going to come back and keep the other Silver Breeze alive? Or I guess so. sacrifice? <laughs> I have to go look at that again. I thought they did 17 wounds. Did I, I, I might have done that wrong. Sorry, what happened there? I thought the two slashers did 17 uh, they, wounds the two when they charged. I think I went yeah, back and looked like at it. Yeah, it looked like they only did uh, a total of eight. So they're wounding me on twos, right? Yeah. So I, I see them doing, no, that's, no, hold on. The Morax have, no. We'll go look at it. I, yeah. It looked really it's obvious to me that they were good. Uh, why don't you do, uh, what did you think, uh, how did a game would go? What went right for you? What went wrong? Uh, what, what do you think you would have done differently? Um, I don't know. I was pretty comfortable with how I set up at the beginning. I think, like uh, like we discussed, the crusher getting wavered at the very beginning made it tough for me to put the pressure on the silver breeze right away. And then uh, again, like honestly, that side of the board just really flopped for me hard. The cavalry, the this even that one round when I went after all four silver breeze at once, I didn't get any of them. I was expecting to get rid of at least two. Mm -hmm. You were two. Um. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, those last silver breeze just not going down at the end there. I just couldn't land the wound. Like my nerve just wasn't making it happen for me. And th those guys going around the rock at the end and still not getting one last hit at the end of seven. Like it just really put the nail in the coffin on me. Um, yeah, those silver breeze were thorn in the side. They were just <laughs> they should not have been where they were at the end of the game. But there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think the, the Silver Breeze was really the big thorn in my side. I was expecting those to be taken care of a little bit sooner, which would have let me get into the other stuff a little bit earlier. So just a little bit of unfortunate like rolls. We were both playing the delay on one flank while pushing up on the, on the other. Matt, it looks like you were, you were trying to delay on the left flank with uh, your long axe, while, uh, long axe horde while you took care of the Silver Breeze. Yeah, that was the idea, uh, like get in there, take like care of some Silver Breeze delay, and start sleeping it a little bit better. Yeah, that was I mean, the general idea. I think I don't know. I don't want to say it did better. I mean, the, the, I, his plan was working, and then the silver breeze didn't mm -hmm. die, and the shooting was effective. I think if either of those things go the other way, if the shooting is a little less effective, and he kill, he snakes that silver mm -hmm. breeze, or he doesn't snake that silver breeze in the forest. I think that that back and forth is is pretty different. Yeah, because not being able to hit your horde there after it deleted my horde was a really big deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are the things that uh, I used to get asked about the civil oh. rights, right? 
great. Um, I did look back on it, and they did only do eight damage, which was a uh, um, because he uh, he really flubbed the roll on the uh, to hit. He only got ten hits out of the twenty uh, on threes that he should have, and eight wounds, and then roll was six, so which would have, would have been a fourteen. Weird. Um, like I said, I said like a, a sacrifice to keep the other guys alive. <laughs> I'll take it. Well played. Uh, and then, so is that uh, did I, did I accidentally roll too many dice or something? There is that what happened? I think we counted the ruins wounds wrong. No, can, you can rewatch <laughs> it and then and then find out what it was. Uh, it went into a bit more detail, but it's fine. It's, it it looked to us like Keith picked up his unit preemptively. Like there would have been more silver breeze yeah. for you to deal with. Uh, <laughs> right. He's been kind. Yeah, uh, he's being a pal. Sorry. All right, thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I so, did want to know about you playing your slashers a little bit more conservatively. It seemed like you kept on hiding them behind your behind the lines rather than just going forward and accepting silver breeze charges. Yeah, which is a little bit different than what I normally do. Like in my past games, I've really been able to get in behind the enemies or by turn or by be in the flank of enemies by turn two. But I don't know. Like I said, I was hoping to get my crusher in there. Like my plan of attack didn't really get to go how I planned it at the beginning because of the waiver and all that. And I didn't want to send in because only one slasher could reach down there at the beginning. I didn't want to send in one slasher then have him get wasted. So I opted to mm-hmm. play play a little bit more dancey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was and keep. Uh, is that something you were worried about with the two slashers there? Uh, were you worried that he was just going to shove everything in your face, or yeah. did you? Yeah. Would you have? Like, I was liked, worried if liked it if he did gonna, that. I was worried he was going to do that. I, I appreciated the dancing. I think the plan, if he did that, was just to turn Silver Breeze and get the fuck out. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if he had, if he had come over there, it would have been. Depending on how he was coming in, it would have been, uh, you know, him chasing Silver Breeze for a couple turns. Which, you know, mm-hmm. I, my 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 plan was to get twelve units strength of Palace Guard across the board and delay as much as I could and shoot the rest, yeah. um, and work uh, out. Along yeah. that end, why didn't you first turn just go ahead and move all all twelve or all three Palace Guard hordes as far forward as you could? Uh, That's a good question. It seems like you're uh, kind of dancing with the long axes. Yeah, I don't. I. I didn't. I didn't want a horde to to pick up ten wounds or so, seven eight wounds that early. Um, I was happy to sort of dance with him. I figured mm-hmm. I could kill the long axe, the more axe, and the young axe in two or three turns with all three of them. Um, and I, you know, if he takes out one of those hordes, then that's a lot of my unit strength. So I didn't want to. I, I know I, if all they all three move forward, I win that back and forth. But he had, you know, more axe there early, and he had young axe sort of on that flank, threatening the one the mm-hmm. palace guard on the right. So I didn't want to give him too many counters. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, I had the clock. The clock was in my head, trying to figure out if, when I needed to go. Um, and I might have jumped the gun with the, with the silver breeze, but I think it the plan worked, so I'm not I'm not going to second guess it too much. But you, your right. point's well taken. Yeah, it worked. I was uh, expecting a single charge from silver breeze into the uh, long axe to go through without okay. going. That was not part of the plan, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget the also the morax, the morax flubbing against the silver breeze as well was just perfect. Just. Uh, yeah. Drew it up that way. Mm-hmm. You throw him in the right place, you get lucky, that's what happens, isn't it? Yeah, but perfect for who? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I think hey, one Keith. of the only things we were thinking... Oh, sorry. Uh, it's my bad. Keith, are elves still shit? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to mess around with them. This is... This list is not going to work against a lot of the good lists out there, so... this is. Okay. I will play elves in a format where I can know... I can guess what my opponent is playing. And your shooting um, did do work for you the first two turns, right? Right. Yeah. But I, I had I yeah. had you know intel that you were, you bring a lot of troops, so uh, yeah. yes. Well, if we were if playing two thousand, it would have been a really a lot. <laughs> right. So if I can choose my opponent and bring elves, then yes, they're fine. But if I have to play undead or you know other high defense armies, no, they're not. I don't. I still. I don't think they're. I mean, they're probably competitive. They're probably not as shit yeah, as I, mean, I made them out to be. Good point. Yeah. 
the shooting does suffer when there's there's more wound removal, um, and Matt not having that uh, definitely plays into a kiting shooting type list. Yeah. I, I don't think you can bring enough weight of fire to be like, remove that regiment next turn, remove that regiment. Like you, you rolled kind of high, so you're like, remove that troop, remove that troop. But that's a big difference, right? I mean, yeah, that's not totally. the same. Totally. So. Mm-hmm. Although he did get the regiment on the second round. Yeah, he yeah, did. With, you know, 28 yes. and a bunch of lightning bolts. And right. Yeah. I, I put it took some effort, but he got it. I mean, just some points into it. <laughs> right. But we're, uh, just to mm-hmm. circle back, I mean, if, if the contention is that elves are bad because they can't be undead, then every army's bad, right? Except for Abyssal yeah. Dwarves. Did I miss that? Did I miss that? <laughs> yeah, no? King is a man can be hey, undead. I mean, right? let, let's, let's just remember, though, Trident Realm actually have the highest win rate right now. True. Uh, try, so, you know, try to run better than undead, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? People who know what they're doing love try to run. People who <laughs> see you could possibly draw, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a correlation <laughs> to what you call correlation. All right, guys. Uh... <laughs> uh, do we have any uh, closing questions or comments? <clears throat> yeah. No, um, just keep from that, room, what can you deploy in? Because it seems like you're really brushed up and like you're more reactive rather than planning out where you're going to be dropping stuff. And then that seemed to affect like your entire first and two, well, first two turns because we are all there going, right, be aggressive now, get those dragons in, throw all your crushers for just go at him. And they weren't coming forward because there's stuff like that war drum were a little bit too far back, which meant that you lost some more like shoot. Stuff like you were just inside the uh, that pond with a, a crusher, so it couldn't match up and get in the face turn one. There's lots of little things where like, do you think with the deployment it's a bit more reactive rather than planning out where things need to be to make use of that first turn? Um, well, when I started deploying, actually, I kind of had it planned out that I wanted to get my infantry like so they would be able to get up on that hill and get some bonus going. And plus, there's a little bit of clear path. And I know I had the obstruction, the obstructions on the right hand side. Um, I wasn't sh- the, my slashers were a reactive placement. Um, Because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to go around and maybe get in behind him, depending on how he went. But I just opted to put them over there, try and gang up on the Silver Breeze. And then my plan was to be able to turn and go sideways across the board. Because I figured uh, he would probably be left with those hordes for his unit strength. But if I could find a way, or even if I have unit strength on my side of the board, I can send slashers to hunt or... I don't know. That's that's kind of where my thought process was. That so, yeah. I started off with the plan, but then it kind of turned into reactive placement. Yeah, it's quite strong. It's quite hard with lots of heavy infantry to fit them all into the <laughs> deployment zone. I played with all yeah, before. Yeah. They just need to just and take like, so much space. With only having one drum too, I kind of have to have my infantry in a decent place where the drum is going to be centered around them, and I want—I also want the drum to be able to go where he needs to be as the battle goes on. Hmm. So I, I guess that was kind of my thought process there. Yeah, I like to see both those long action regiments just pin down that, like, because we saw these silver bees to put on the right side. So two there, thinking, but they've got nowhere to go now. They're going to be hemmed in, and that right flank's going to go. Like they're not getting through two long axe regiments. They just pulled one of the long axe regiments away, and suddenly a gap opened up. And I was wondering just why why you pulled that extra long axe regiment away when they could just walk across that board and get that nice safe six in, uh, unit strength across. I think there was a one inch issue with the uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The fit. He couldn't move five inches and not stay out of one inch of the cats. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I was, yeah, there was some issues there with them being within one inch. I don't know. I think I was trying to go, we had, we had taken a look at it and it wasn't possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. <laughs> yep. Thank you very much. Uh, right. definitely well, got thank a bit you very much, everyone. Um, our next stream is later on today. It'll be 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so I'm just a little over under four hours, no, a little under five hours, um, and uh, that'll be Jeff Trace versus Alex Coos. So uh, it'll be Australia versus Canada. And if uh, and go ahead and tune in then. Uh, thank you all for joining us, uh, Matt Keith. Thank you for letting us uh, watch your battle. No problem. Everyone have a, a a good day and good evening.
You yeah, too. Great to watch, guys. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. We'll see you later. Can you turn on the AC? It's great. Done. Whoa.